All right. So this is the Vulgar Philosophy Podcast. We have returned. And this is a week after the election. And we still don't know who the president is. Apparently. <laughs> apparently. We have survived so far. Yeah, civil war hasn't erupted yet. Um, and I really don't think it's going to. Like, No. It was kind of anticlimactic. Wasn't it? Yeah. Like no, nothing happened. I think the, the doomsday scenario was, and we, we could still be in it if Trump oh, yeah, does for sure. find fraud and then he becomes president. That's probably the doomsday scenario. Then you'll get rioting, looting, protesting, all that stuff. I think I can see rioting or looting from either side, depending on how um, – how things escalate, you know, but like a lot of people. Nah, I don't think people want that. No, I don't think everyday people want that, but I think extremists on either side could try to provoke things, but I think they've lost a lot of their steam than they used to have. Honestly, I don't see people on the right, pro, you know, rioting and looting. The, the protests, I like took a, a semi-truck protest the other day or something, but they won't be the ones on the street riding, looting. I really think yeah, that... Yeah, I have a hard time seeing them burning down buildings. Right. Yeah. I really think that when stuff like that happens, it's people who don't really care about the politics and they just see an opportunity to destroy, you know, and steal shit. Right. I, well, yeah, I, I totally agree. Um... I think the right wing militia types are more likely to have precise targets. <laughs> like they're not going right. to burn down, burn down coals. You know, they're going to go after the police department or, you know, the, the governor, the governor's mansion. Yeah. Something like that. They're a little more like, Hey, we know who the enemy is and the enemy, and we're going to go after them. Planned out. Whereas like the left is like, on average, is just like, let's just create as much anarchy as possible so the cops come out and we can fight the cops, you know? <laughs> Jeez. While defunding the police, by the way. Mm. Um, but yeah, it is, it does seem to be, like, calming down. If, any, if anything, it's just getting less and less. Like, I think a lot of people have resigned to the fact that Biden's going to be the president. And um, there's some more extreme Trump supporters that are calling it all a fraud and it's and I just think well let's just see how it plays out in the courts I mean right yeah I was telling you earlier like hey challenge it in courts lay your case out if there is fraud yeah punish whoever's doing the fraud and then make it right if there's no fraud that's great we have a clean election is you know we elect Joe Biden and, that, and that's that yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously, if there is something shady, then they should find out about it. Right, right. But who knows, man? They got to look into it. It'll take months. The reason that leading up to it that I was kind of nervous is because, like, the peaceful transition of power is like one of the th one of our. If I had to pick a sacred thing in the United States, that's one of them. You know, where. Because like other countries that don't have peaceful transitions, it's not pretty. So it's never happened before where someone lost and then they were just like, nah, I'll stay. An article I read or yesterday. they were just kind of shitty to the person incoming. An article I read yesterday said their, the words they used was, that we haven't had a president in recent memory not concede. Right, that could mean like, in 50 years though yeah so what does that mean like maybe somebody in like the late 1800s didn't concede because if i remember correctly there's a few elections there that were super super close you know and in fact um <clears throat> my wife and i looked up really close we just forgot mm -hmm. out of curiosity uh saturday when biden was elect you know declared the winner or whatever out of curiosity we just did a little bit of reading about like okay well what other elections have been really close, you know? And there's ones that were way closer than this. Like, oh, is that right? Yeah, there was one where the person won the electoral college by one vote, one electoral vote. That was like was in the, that? 
I, I want to say it was Rutherford Hayes versus uh, Samuel Tilden, which is funny because my what Cassandra is related to Hayes somehow. No way. Yeah, in one of her somewhere, you know. It's crazy to think what could have been happening at that time that it was like so close. It were people like really invested in it like they are today well speaking of fraud that's a period of our history where things were really corrupt like the that's what they called what in high school they called it the gilded age or whatever so like the civil war to like 1900 the shit was really corrupt back that at that time like there's a lot of money exchanging hands and there's no computers, there's no cameras. So you right. can do a lot of ton, ton of wheeling and dealing and get away with it. You know, these days you can track everything. You know, it's, it's all, you're on camera 24 seven, any kind of money exchange is, is digitally tracked. It was hard to get away with that kind of shady stuff. Yeah. Even Trump can't get away with the phone call. And back then, both parties were a lot more corrupt, too, you know? Yeah, just imagine the shit that has been said over a phone <laughs> over the last hundred years or whatever, all the world leaders. That would right. be really interesting to hear, you know? I'd love to hear, like, a, a, a Churchill FDR phone conversation. That would be cool. But, I mean, they didn't – I don't think they really recorded stuff, you know, like, not audio tapes anyway. Yeah, I mean, no, they didn't. That's why it would be interesting because, like – they never thought they would be recorded. <laughs> like, you can say whatever you want. I got really into presidential history for a brief time. And, like, um, before, like, the radio, before we had, like, recording equipment and stuff, like, all we had from the presidents was either what they said and, like, so what people transcribed, you know, from hearing them talk or from letters and journals. And some presidents didn't do that shit. Like, McKinley didn't have a journal and didn't write many letters, so we know hardly anything about him. <laughs> it's, it's like there's a leader. We just don't know anything about him. You know, we just make assumptions. <laughs> Isn't that crazy, though? Like, give it, you know, a few years, and then all that in the past, if you didn't write anything down or documentize anything, it's, just, it's gone. Like, so know, some was or what, it, what they did. Somebody who's going to write the Trump the Trump biography, you know, cause every president gets like freaking 50 biographies, you know, but right. they're going to, they're going to have to read all his whole Twitter feed. They're like, <laughs> Dude, how <laughs> many tweets have there been? <laughs> oh, it's got to be tons. Here, let me be like 10,000. I want to look, I want to look. So. Well, it, it's great. You no, know, these days, everything's recorded. So like potentially 12 years from now, they can go back. All of his tweets are, I assume, are somewhere archived. Where they, they can pull be. up and then get, you know, exact of his words. Where, you no, know, from here, 200 years ago, you really can't do that. They're going to, yeah, they're all going to be archived because they, you know, they just have Plus to be. Plus all the video, you know, video clips, all right. over the internet every day. They never had that before. That would be. He's got to be one of the first presidents to have this amount of recorded evidence. Well, like Bush was kind of the, a little bit of the beginning, right? And then Obama really took advantage of social media. So I guess I would consider him the first president to really use it, you know. But then Trump, obviously, like, is all over social yeah. media. Yeah. So. Trump was the first who like would announce plans on Twitter. <laughs> like you would now right. or you wouldn't do a press conference or put a letter out or a statement out it would be on twitter you would announce hey i'm pulling five thousand troops out of, out of iraq and he would now right. i gotta be honest this is, in my opinion is pretty inappropriate and that has nothing to do with my politics like, right if if biden did that i'd be like really how about you do a press conference like a normal president <laughs> I mean, change, you're an old man now and you're like hey you get off the twitter you darn kids <laughs> really though like i'm kind of old school with my presidents you know i want them to be presidential and biden is not i mean uh, you know it's kind of that's another thing i wanted to talk about uh today actually was like out of okay so like i guess <clears throat> ideologically 
like I align more with the Democrats than the Republicans, but I really don't like either. And I really don't, I don't want to be called or identified as a Democrat at all. Cause I really hate the two party system, but that's, I mean, we got to do something about that. Yeah, I feel the same way. I just happen to agree with the Democrats more and there's stuff I really agree with the, cons- with the Republicans on. Like I'm hardcore second amendment and I always will be out of all the issues I've changed my mind over the years, but that's one issue where I've never changed my mind. <laughs> oh, hold on, guys. I, I, I'll be right back. Sorry about okay. that. But um, where was I going with this? Take an amendment. You haven't changed your mind. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm just kind of irritated that out of like 27 people or 500 people who are running for the Democratic nomination that we ended up with joe biden because i kind of thought he was at first before the pandemic hit it looked like he wasn't gonna win you know and yeah and then all of a sudden before we know it he's the he's the guy and like and it must be because um well the party sucks the democrats suck dude it must be the way they push out all the good candidates do you think it's be, do you think it's because the pandemic hit and then people wanted like a stable, boring, normal guy? So then we suddenly had Biden. They didn't want to take their chance with Sanders and have a crazy freaking progressive or what? Like they wanted somebody more electable to beat Trump, I guess. More electable. I have no idea. I don't know what the reasoning I have no is. No idea. I didn't vote for Biden, obviously, in the primary, you know. Like, uh, I voted for Yang and he was like way last. And in fact, he hadn't, he had already, he had already declared the end of his candidacy by the time like Michigan came around. Hello. Hey Shane. Okay. Hey, I'm back. Sorry about that. No worries. So we were just talking about how, like, out of a field of like ten thousand Democrats, we ended up with Joe Biden as the nominee. And like, my only theory. So, Go ahead. Uh, I, I have a theory about that, right? Okay. So everybody always says it's the lesser of two evils, right? I just think whoever you pick, you can pick a saint, right? And then no matter what. The media, the other side, is going to find something about this person and make them look evil, right? So to, no matter what, they're going to look bad, you know, they're going to make up lies, skew the truth, and kind of bash this person's name. I'll tell you what, like, I think I like to back people who the media and the establishment don't like, you know? Right. So- Oh, that was Yang and Tulsi Gabbard and Sanders. And of course, none of them, I mean, you know, <laughs> none of them. Like, I mean, <clears throat> by the time I got my ballot to vote in the primary, like Yang had already can, had already left the race and I voted for him anyway. I'm like, I don't care. I'm not <laughs> voting for any of the, uh, these other people. <laughs> so like, but um, Yang might get a, I mean, Biden really likes him. So Yang might get a cabinet position, but, but, but maybe not. Who knows? So like, probably not. That, I have to say they, probably not. Th- th- that's weird too. Cause all, all the, uh, what, what do you call them? All the, 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 the running mates, Biden's running mates, all conceded right around Super Tuesday so I'm sure he promised them all of these positions hmm. to, to concede if he's president, and then they all support him, boosting him up. So it all came, seems kind of sketchy. Yeah, it's possible. I can see that happening. I put forward the idea that, like, maybe, like, to Greg, when you were busy, to, like, what is, like, <clears throat> did, did Biden suddenly win because, like, the pandemic hit, and they're like, let's pick the most most, like, boring – stable most likely to win person to beat trump and that happened to be joe biden excuse me that happened to be joe biden i guess right yeah i think half of it is that yeah it's the pandemic hit and the economy's awful like if it was if there was no no virus and we had that booming economy before the pandemic 
I can almost guarantee a couple get reelected. So that's probably yeah. part of it. Another part is everybody hates Trump. Like the media is, you know, the media, the left, whoever you want to say, always the constant bashing on Trump. So that, that kind of, at that point, lowers his numbers as well. Okay, well, here, just to hold that thought, like I'm looking at the Wikipedia for the Democratic primary. Um, the top three, or top like four, I guess, the only four candidates to break a million votes. Number four was Bloomberg, three, Warren, two, Sanders, and one was Joe Biden. Joe Biden won 46 contests. And Sanders won nine and Bloomberg won one. Pete Buttigieg won one. So like Sanders... I mean, Biden beat it in a landslide. <laughs> like, well, wasn't that because all the other running mates pulled, pulled out? I don't know. I think I, I think most of them pulled out. Like Cory Booker, um, I forget their names, but they all pulled out at the last minute. So the only one on the ballot was, you know, Joe Biden or you know Bernie or. Um, yeah, there was definitely some stuff going on behind the scenes. Well, look at this. Uh, on April 8th, Biden became the presumptive nomi- nominee after Sanders, the only other candidate remaining, withdrew from the race. So, yeah, suddenly they all quit. Right. Right, right when the suddenly. pandemic hit. <laughs> hmm. I mean, same thing happened with Trump. Um, all the running mates now hold positions. Well, not all of them, but quite a few of them hold positions in his administrative. I've said it before. That's kind of just how it works, though, right? Right. Like, pretty much with every election, yeah. like, whoever comes out ahead, they pick, you know, people who were pretty close. It has a lot to do with political strategy, I think, is to, to try to, like, once the primary is over, you know, to try to unite the party to beat the other party. Right. You know? So, like if Biden wins, he doesn't want to alienate. Wasn't there a point in history where whoever won the election was president, whoever got second was vice president? Way back. Yeah. Really? Imagine if that happened. That'd be nuts. Way back. Imagine that. Like, uh, like Trump would be VP right now. (laughs) Like that. I think that would be like, that was like Washington and Thomas Jefferson, you know, who were on different parties, but that I don't remember. I feel so ashamed that I, my knowledge of history is lacking here. But How like, dare you? I know. How but dare like, you hold this podcast and not know everything? At some point, that was changed, you know? But one of the reasons I love this podcast is all of us have different, you know, backgrounds, and that's kind of what I like. And, and uh, Right. I don't want all of us to be engineers and just sit in our stupid echo chamber talking about the same things. I love how we all have different lives and different perspectives. Right. This is philosophy after all. We can't all agree. Okay. There's no, it's boring. What? What'd you say? Vulgar philosophy. Vulgar. Yeah. We're supposed to say fuck. <laughs> We're supposed to say fuck every now and then, you know, <clears throat> but um. anyway, God, there was another thing I really wanted to say and I can't remember what it is. Uh, I think I sort of interrupted you. That's okay. I don't so like what do you to, think? No, sorry, ahead. do you think Trump is going to like what? What's the? Time oh, I thought of, I thought of what it is. Okay, but go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Oh no, I'll, oh. I'll I'll write it down. You go. Write, write it down. <laughs> All right. What do you think the timeline is in this next few months? So, do you think Trump will investigate? All the court hearings would go against him. Would he get see at that point, or would he be like, no? I'm not conceding. What do you think is going to happen? I think he'll probably stay till January 20th. Then he'll leave, and then he'll just rant about how it was stolen. And then he'll come up with a new TV show, and he'll call it The President. And he'll just be the President of the United States on a TV show. I think I have to, I think I have to agree with Greg, you know, like, I think like more and more and more people who back him or he's going to lose as the court cases go on and they prove that there's no, I really believe that this is not me being biased. I really believe there's no fraud. Like, I think because like 
there might be a couple instances of fraud, but there's a, it's a pretty like transparent process, you know? Right. And, um, but, uh, because if there was fraud, why wouldn't the Democrats take the Senate, the Senate, you know, it's all the same ballots. So like, why, why wouldn't the Senate, why wouldn't we suddenly have a, the, the and would, it's, it's by like 4 million votes. Mm. So it's, exactly. It's, yeah. It's, Pretty like, large margin. Well, you, you can figure out. Let's say you you rule out a hundred thousand votes are fraud. There's still so many more that's in by its favor. I don't and, know how you get around that. And Trump even told his supporters, he's like, "Don't vote mail in. Vote vote on election day." And right. Demo Democrats tend to be more. I wouldn't say fearful, but like more like aware of the coronavirus and would prefer to mail in their vote rather than go to the polls. And, and that's one thing he's arguing. One of his points is, so I think it's in Georgia, for example, where all the Democrats who are mailing in, if you mailed in from a county that's mainly Democrats and you mailed your ballot in wrong, they would call you or contact you if you're in that county saying, hey, you filled your ballot out wrong, send it back in. And then if it was more from a Republican county, they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't say, hey, you filled it out wrong, send it back in. Hmm. So one of his many cases is saying that it's, you know, bias on who you're promoting to vote. I also feel like if he really thought there was going to be a fraud, he could have done something about it. For like six months right I, like like why don't you get something in place where it's you know for sure it's not going to happen like at the last second he all these poll watching um rules you try to get the, them, them in closer why not months beforehand say hey that be in within six feet poll watching why do that on the day of or you know the week of it kind of brings me to my point, the thing that I wanted to say, like, I, I just really don't think he's a good statesman, you know, like, I, like, a, like, functionally, just not a good statesman, like, you can talk, I mean, his business record is for another podcast, I guess, but like, I think Trump would have been a good, like, okay, when I say peacetime, I don't literally mean war, you know, but like, Trump would be a good, like, Okay, if you swap Trump for Clinton, right, if you take like 92 to 2000, that would have been a good time for Trump to be president. Like a, a peacetime, there's no craziness happening, you know? But like a 9-11, a coronavirus, a Great Depression, you know, a world war or crisis, like crises, not a, right. good, pres not a good president for that. Right, where you really got to heavily consider the outcomes before you make decisions. Like you know? if, it, if there was just like, if the economy was doing well and like there weren't craziness happening in the world, which I mean, there hardly ever isn't, right? There, how many periods of American history can you pick where there wasn't a huge problem happening? But like right. probably post the 90s, war. probably 92 to 2000, like I said. Post, post <laughs> Cold War, post right. World War II. Right. Oh yeah, the fifties. He would have been a good president for the fifties. <laughs> you know. Except there was no Twitter, so Right. That's a big problem. I'm not saying I'm not at all saying that like Biden's gonna be amazing. I, who knows? I mean he's not president. I don't think yet. we can expect a lot from him. <laughs> well honestly with, with the Republicans having the Senate, it's gonna be gridlock for the next like, yeah. two years and then you revote. Yeah. Two years. 2000. Yeah. 2022 will be the next, the midterms for the Senate. That may be a good thing, though. Maybe okay. a good thing. Okay. Because we don't want to, you know, take this crisis and make it worse by passing a bunch of legislation. Like, yeah, having all three branches, all one party is, is kind of scary. <laughs> well, see, I mean, I think I made that point on the last podcast where I don't want a unanimous party controlling all, you know, controlling both sec two out of the three sections of the government. Cause then they're just going to crazily pass all the crap that they want. It, it, in a way it might be better to have 
opposite parties in either one, so they do less damage <laughs> to the <laughs> to, <laughs> right. But then you get crap like the last four years with Nancy and Pelo Nancy Pelosi accusing Trump of being a Russian agent and I hate Nancy Pelosi. God, is she and, still elected? I just wish she would go away. Yeah, how, how do we get her out, and how do we get um the other guy out? Yeah, Chuck Schumer. Yeah, Chuck Schumer and the, the Republican Mitch, Mc, guy. Mitch McConnell. I hate Mitch, Mitch McConnell. McConnell. Your, your buddy Chase. <laughs> I hate I hate him so much. Like, I like I said last time. Take my my dislike for Trump and multiply that by like freaking ten thousand. That's how I feel about Mitch McConnell. Like I just cannot stand that guy. Like the, they're they're the classic Trump. You know the the swamp. They're the, the classic, swamp. Like, yeah. Get him out. Like. I thought Trump was He's draining the swamp. The swamp king. The swamp king. Trump did not drain the swamp, and I, honestly, I think that's why he, he filled lost. Filled it up, honestly. I, in my my personal opinion, this is this is a biased opinion, by the way, folks. But like, <laughs> the reason I think Trump lost is because he did not drain the swamp. He just refilled it with the same old fucking people who've always been there, like, uh, like Jeff Sessions, you know, people like that. Like, it's like I thought you were getting rid of these people. <laughs> like, you didn't. But I think Biden's going to be the same. Biden's going to get elected and fill it with the left, the left wing swamp. So, like, <laughs> right. Yeah. But the whole of, thing, go ahead. the whole thing everybody's saying about Biden is he's just going to be the the face, you know, of the, the presidency, and the whole the party behind him is going to run it because he's so out of it and delusional and sleepy. <laughs> That's how it should be, though, honestly. It shouldn't be run by one guy. It should be like a bunch of people, right? Like it's president and his cabinet. So he picks like a bunch of people to run all the different departments. It shouldn't just be one dude in charge of everything. Right. And that's why I voted for Andrew Yang, because I want – a more scientific perspective on things. So like, I really think that like in my heart of hearts that if we had president Yang, he would have picked who do I think mathematically and logically is the best for this job, not politically, but who do I think is going to be the best for this job? I'm going to pick that guy. Right now. now like I'm a freaking, I'm an idiot. So like no one's ever going to elect me president, but like if I was president, I would probably have people from both parties in my cabinet. Wow, what a surprise that is. I mean, like, like that would be a good way to, I don't know. That's why you would never be elected. No, hell no. I wouldn't even make it to the primaries. They'd like kick me, they'd like push me down the stairs and I'd have an accident, you know? So <laughs> I would never make it. But like, if President Tucker was suddenly the president, I'd be like, okay, I want a Republican for the defense and I want a Democrat for blah, blah, blah. And like, I'd have both parties or no parties. Like, uh, who's a brilliant architect and knows like how a city's supposed to be run. That's that guy's our housing and urban development guy now. And he was never in politics before, but look at his freaking credentials. He knows what he's doing. Like, right. let's get some of the politics out. And that's what I said to Greg. Like, I, I'm going to, put you on the spot here man but like like we talked about greg being in office or something and he was joking he's like maybe i'll be whatever be the president be a senator i'm like do it and i meant it i'm like can we have more scientists like <laughs> less lawyers I, I would probably get corrupted so fast though <laughs> someone be like hey how about 10 million bucks for this uh bill to get passed and be like yeah okay okay just this one though I'll you slip go, it in. You go to one of those private island Epstein cocktail parties and yeah. dude, they've... I I kinda like this private island. <laughs> and then they've got you. Yeah, I'm I would be susceptible to influence, I feel. I hate politics. Like the act the activity of politics, I hate it and would never be able to do it. Like I got my taste of it. I went to Boys State. Um, which is like a government simulation. And dude, I hate, I went into that being like, I'm going to run for office someday. And I left it being like, hell no. Like these <laughs> were all, these were all 
17 year olds and the same political crap happened it was a lot of like a lot of faction like well this guy wants this and this guy wants that and it was a lot of political machinations you know like little finger from game of thrones a lot of that crap happening all the time all the time and i'm like what about like morals and principles <laughs> no one cares about that it's like how am i going to get elected and how am i going to going to stay elected you know right it's all about the pandering pandering is disgusting so do I talk too much during this podcast? I think I'm a, sh sometimes I think I'm a shitty host and I need to let the other people talk more, but we're all, I consider all of us hosts. So, you know, I, mean, I think we're talking equally. We're both getting you know, our points in. But yeah. Another thing my wife and I talked about was like presidential pets. Another reason I don't like Trump, no pets, no dogs. We didn't get You're not right. even a goldfish. Nothing. Zero. But isn't it weird how Biden right away, he's like, bam. Here's yeah, my dog. I know. Because <laughs> he knew that people would like that. I know. Right. Really like, he was like, on it. And that irritated me. I'm like, really? You're going to politicize like, you your... Motherfucker. You're going to politicize your rescue dog? That irritated me. <laughs> that poor dog, man. I like, never wanted this. It was, it was still in the area of like, hey, did he get there or not? Is there fraud or not? And it's like, yeah. oh, bam, I already got a dog from my White House. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> and like, I heard, speaking of like NPR, I heard on, on like NPR, he's like, we're, that was like one of his, <laughs> that was like, it, he spoke about it as if it was like one of his campaign positions. I'll bring dogs back to the White House. And I'm like, <laughs> come, come on. Right? Come on. Like, who's really taking care of this dog? Are, are, is, you know, Jill, Jill and Joe Biden really watching this dog? Or is the dog, you know, the AIDS problem now? Oh, so. The dog might be, like, head of security or something. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the other thing, is we looked at, like, on Wikipedia, like, the list of presidential pets, and some of them are crazy. And, like, Coolidge had, like, Calvin Coolidge had like 40 friggin pets, man. This guy had like eight or nine dogs, cats, a raccoon, a raccoon. Teddy Roosevelt had like a bear. He had a lot of, he had a lot of pets too. Teddy Roosevelt had a lot of pets too, but um, Coolidge had like a raccoon re named Rebecca that was actually intended to be Thanksgiving dinner, but, but the first lady loved it so much that they kept it as a pet. That's great. <laughs> I don't know. If I was president, I'd you know get a few cows, some goats, some chickens. Put a little farm in the backyard. You're not. That's not even a joke because that's literally happened. That's literally really? happened. Yeah, like Woodrow Wilson had a flock of sheep in the White House lawn that would walk around and eat the grass and stuff. Right, that'd be that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> it's part of my dream when I get my my forever home. I want a lot of property and get like goats and chickens. I want that's goats. What, have your own petting zoo. Exactly. And then you get eggs and milk if you want it. And they're fun to watch. I tell my wife that I want goats all the time because they're hilarious. Mm. I want two goats. You know, those, those little small, um, I forget what they're called, but when you scare them, they faint. Fainting oh. goats. Are, yeah. Is it called fainting goats? Isn't that what they're called? They're so teeny, and they hop on everything, and they're so curious. It's hilarious. Goats. I think uh, I think she wants some piggies and a cow. So we'd at least have several goats, several pigs, and at least one cow. Yeah, so. I don't know. I think horses and cows are too big. <laughs> they are if big. They, if they get that big, I, I can't handle them. Like a, a goat, cow, a goat, chickens, maybe a pig can handle but a horse and a cow is quite a bit yeah you got to get like bales of hay to feed right. them you can have goat's milk though goat's milk goat's cheese if you learn how to make it and uh obviously the chickens will give you eggs so that's pretty cool i mean and you can make butter from the milk you know so like yeah there's lots of things you could use not not them just being pets but um the goats are just really cool. They're funny. And I don't, I don't know. I think they're hilarious. Animals. I like them. <laughs> they're just silly. They, they get zoom. I love like watching animal zoomies. 
you know, like, cause they all get zoomies, not just cats and dogs, but every other animal gets zoomies too. And that's hilarious. What do you mean by zoomies? You don't know what I mean by zoomies. They just, they just run around like a spaz cause they got, they don't know what to do with their energy and they just, oh. yeah, just like run in circles and jump on shit. Yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't understand that terminology. I, I get it now. I saw one goat who was like running in a circle. He just couldn't handle it. And he ended up like, he ended up like jumping and like bouncing all four legs against another goat and knocking him down. And he kept running. <laughs> he just couldn't handle his, his excitement. <laughs> but um, yeah. So like, I think uh, one of the presidents had a pet alligator. A few of them had pet bears. Yeah. A lot That's of them had, funny. there were a lot of birds. That surprised me. A ton of them had birds. Uh, <laughs> Like little birds or like an ostrich? <laughs> no ostriches, I don't think. Like that would be hilarious. Seeing one walking around the White House, you I think go to the bathroom in the middle of the night and you see like an ostrich and they'd be like, "Oh!" Shit. <laughs> Didn't one of them have a hawk or eagle or something? Yeah. I, I can yeah. see that. Yeah, like That's one very of them. American. Um, but the exotic animals, there were like bears. T- some tigers. Have you ever seen that video of Trump with that eagle? <laughs> <laughs> it's like on the desk and it spooks him. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's so funny. But what's really cool about like a lot of the more exotic animals is that they're usually gifts from other leaders, like <clears throat> like like kings and emperors and stuff. Like I think the emperor of China gave one of them a tiger, and another one, the emperor of the Ottomans gave him like a a donkey or something they're all gifts you know and the president's like okay what do i do with this animal and then they, like they put them put them in a stable somewhere you know and, uh jefferson had two bears like some explorer in uh the frontier gave the president jefferson two bears and he's like he he wrote something like the bears are too big and too cumbersome for me to take care of, so I gave them to the zoo or something. something. <laughs> yeah, what the heck would you even do with that? Yeah, right. wild two wild bear cubs. <laughs> That's crazy. But uh, my wife was telling me about how famous like Clinton's pets were, like his pet sock socks socks the cat was really famous, always in the news. Um. Sure. Speed of cat. W. W. Had like a dog. Wasn't it a Scotty? I think a Scottish Terrier. It was like, and they took photos of these pets like behind the presidential podium, and they're just sitting there. The pets like okay, behind <laughs> the podium. Anyways, this is just really random. We can talk about something else, but I just thought it was really interesting. That's weird, yeah, that Trump never had a pet. I didn't really think about that. Animals don't like him. They can sense evil. <laughs> <laughs> but like you said, I mean, like these dogs that Biden has could be amazing dogs, but like, yeah, he's my rescue that I found yesterday. I mean, who knows, right? I don't know. Right, right. I don't know. So what do you th- what's Biden's first plan in office? What, what's he going to do? He wants to re-sign the Paris Climate Agreement the first day he's back. I know that that's a big thing. Um, he's what got does like that a- even do? Nothing. So like, I keep reading about that. And I'm like, dude, I don't freaking know what this means. It's voluntary. So, like, I mean, there, it doesn't have any... It doesn't have any teeth, you know, or like if somebody doesn't meet their carbon emissions reductions, they're not going to be like sanctioned or punished for it. They're just going to be shamed. <laughs> like bad, bad United States, bad China. It doesn't even do anything. No, it uh, functionally, functionally, it doesn't do anything. I don't know. Trump like left because he hated the deal for some reason. Like, but what's the deal? There is no deal apparently. Because <laughs> you don't have to do anything. It's an agreement. It's like an, a voluntary agreement to like scale back your carbon emissions and damage to the environment and whatever. But um, a lot. But the deal part is um, transferring like funds and money 
from wealthier countries to less developed countries to try to build green infrastructure who otherwise wouldn't have it because they can't afford it, you know? Like oh, this- so it's probably like the U.S. has to give a shitload of money <laughs> to India or whatever. Yeah, like Obama's administration gave like a billion dollars to it or something. But, um, well, India is supposed to be a contributor. Like developed, developed countries, you know, India, China, USA, Europe, Canada, Australia, yeah, Australia, you know, those countries have to contribute more because they're wealthier, number one, but mostly because they're developed, right? So they, they have the technology and the infrastructure, but a country like, you know, Gabon or Mozambique or whatever, you know. Um, Speaking of climate change, hmm. here's an interesting question. Who, which country do you think will be the first to colonize Antarctica when all the ice melts? China. Is there anything there worth? Is there oil or There's a shitload or? of minerals. Is there? It's, it's just underneath all the ice. I believe it. So as soon as it melts, dude, people are going to be flocking there. I would say China because China is the country that's in most vital need of minerals and natural resources. I think Antarctica is like the second largest continent, isn't it? It's huge. But we have a treaty to where you're not supposed to claim land from Antarctica, even though countries do it anyway. Yeah, but that's just because no one can live there right now. So nobody wants to go there anyways. Well, what if we go there and the alien from the thing just kills us all? I mean, you know, I'm just kidding, but that's a good, <laughs> that's a good movie. But, um, but, um, yeah, well, I would say China. There's probably a, a crap load of oil too. So it's how all much, hidden under the ice. How much ice is, how much, how much ice is between the ground and the, the surface? A lot. Like miles. Oh, is it really? Wow. Yeah. How much ice? How thick is the ice in Antarctica? It's obviously getting thinner, though. 2,160 meters at its thickest. Right? At its thickest is the thickest point in the ice sheet is 4,000. The thickest point in the ice sheet is 4,776 meters. It averages 2,160. Hmm. So making, like two kilometers. Making Antarctica the highest continent. Really? This ice big. this ice is ninety percent of all the world's ice and seventy percent oh, this is the big this is the big deal here. Seventy percent of all of the world's fresh water. Hmm. And yeah, this is it's, why it's all just sitting there. And this and is why melts, climate <laughs> that's a lot of water. This is why okay, climate so change levels are going to rise, you know, cities be underwater. And that's why climate is my number one issue. If I had to pick one. That's going to take a long time. Right. So we don't even care about it. <laughs> we'll be long gone before it all melts, right? I think the big thing is um, stuff like the coronavirus, you know, for example, or climate change, is it's it un- it unfolds gradually, so it's not scary immediately, you know, like nine eleven, right, where there's right. a clear and present danger, or if Pearl Harbor, you know, that sort of thing. So, so let's just say that it takes like a hundred years to melt all the ice. That's not that long. You no. gotta like move all the people away from the coastal cities. Most cities are on the coast. So something that um, something that takes centuries to build, right? The ice sheets erodes in a hundred years. <laughs> I mean, well, think about it. If the temperature gets warmer, it has to. That's I run an art when when it gets warm, ice melts. I did a little bit of research on this today and I read a bunch of articles to try to like be in more informative on the podcast rather than just stand here and could have a bunch of conjecture, but like it's basically a climatologist described it as like putting like an, uh, an ice cube in like 
turning up your heat in the in your house right to where the the air the ambient air in your house is super hot and then putting that ice cube in a hot pan on the stove like that's what it is because like the water warms up and the air and the planet warms up so it's like two uh heat sources coming at the same thing at the same time and over time it's causing a big problem you know but really I think all the proof we need is Venus. Like, look at that place. And it's like, well, that is our potential future. Maybe we need to start like doing something about it. And yeah, it's going to suck, right? It's going to hurt trying to curb our emissions. Cause it's going to, not really. All we have to do is stop using carbon fuels in the grand scheme of things. It's like not that complicated, especially considering all the other forms of energy we already have. I mean, yeah, it's going to suck in a the short, short term. Can I just say that why don't we have more nuclear energy? Like, why can't that just be a thing? Like, I don't, everybody's terrified of nuclear energy, and I'm all for nuclear energy. Yeah, why is it? Why is the left against nuclear? I'm not. That's the thing I disagree with them I on. I think it's a national security thing. They think that if there's nuclear energy, they're going to get nuclear bombs. We already Maybe. have nuclear bombs. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know, dude. It seems like that's the way to go. I think they're worried about but like there hasn't been a, a, a nuclear power station built in the US since like nineteen eighty. Wow. That is just pathetic. And like think about how much they've advanced in like forty years. Like if you right, yeah, like a twenty twenty nuclear reactor. Right, yeah, but you so much the... better. Go ahead, Shane. Yeah, if you focus on the new technology and you create a state-of-the-art nuclear reactor, why not? Oh, I saw some designs for some new nuclear reactors that are like modular ones, so like the size of a shipping container, but they're like self-contained, so you can like ship them somewhere, bury it in the ground. It's a power source for like 20 or 30 years, then you dig it up and replace it. Like, why don't we just... Do you or you, like drop, you drop it in the Middle East and you create a whole mushroom cloud. Drop right. Well, well, that's, that's I guess, why I don't want to do it. <laughs> well, I mean, we already weaponized the hell out of nuclear energy. I mean, how many nukes are there in the world? But, like, Tons. why? I don't, I really just don't, I mean, I'm not a climatologist again, but, like, I really just don't see a way out of this without nuclear energy. I really just don't think... I really am. I haven't looked at the numbers. I have not looked at the numbers, but I really just don't think that wind, solar, and geothermal is going to meet the energy needs of the planet. Like we need nuclear. I really think we do. Like that's what my well, intuition says. Well, you're right. The the technology now for solar panels it's not efficient. Like one, you're using a lot of you know fossil fuels to create the solar panels, and they're not. Right, you know, uh, efficient enough to create that much energy. Um, Ideally, you would want fusion, but of course, that's who knows if we're ever going to be able to do that. I think that'll happen within our lifetimes. Yeah. I hope so. But I'm I'm talking they keep about saying that they're getting closer and closer, which they are. But how close do you need to be? <laughs> Like they build, they spend, you know, a hundred billion dollars on a reactor and they're like, all right, we got, we got pretty close this time. <laughs> I just think we don't have any other choice other than like in the short term than to use nuclear energy because. I think solar could eventually cut it. I mean, really that's where all the energy comes from on the planet. It's just, uh, it takes a lot longer for plants to harvest it and then turn into oil. But I think if we covered like a large portion of land with solar, it, like I don't know how much power you could get from that. I think it'd be a lot. Well, isn't, isn't California getting like brownouts? Because they can't, they're running off of wind and solar and they can't, you know, power their their cities 
It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, but they don't even have enough water in California. <laughs> Doesn't Bill Burr have a joke about that? Like any place where there's no water, we really shouldn't be living there. Like LA is just an artificial right. artificial. Aren't they city. like they're like <laughs> sandwiched between a desert and the ocean? Right. Well, it's a, it's a great point. Like you think about yeah, you know Los Angeles, Nevada. You know, it's in a desert. You have know, New Orleans. It's in a giant bowl. Or even building on coastlines. Like you build on a coastline and if the water comes in 10 feet, it's gonna erode your wall, take away your house. Yeah, just build on a river, you know? Just go a little bit inland on a river. Yeah, but still it's like, you think you would learn your lesson and not not build these high risk locations. Like New York is good, but they just got too close to the ocean. You need to move it back, you know? Like our really ancient ancestors who all built on river deltas, right? Um, the the Tigris and Euphrates River in Iraq, right? And uh, China and Mexico, they all, the, like, the earliest human civilizations, Egypt. Egypt, were built by a river. Well, at that point, it's just, yeah, you get your water source. It's easy yeah, it's fresh water, not salt water. I just had a weird thought from like a game I play all the time. Like maybe we need to just build a Dyson sphere. <laughs> Dude, yeah. That would be that would be the ultimate. Do you know what but a Dyson would, sphere is, Shane? I don't. That would be so many resources though. A Dyson sphere is a very 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 hypothetical uh, superstructure where you basically you build like a, a casing around a star and you use that casing to literally absorb all of the energy from that star. It's like a shell that goes around the star, but it's a solar panel. Really? It sucks all the energy out. All right, I'm down. Let's build it. <laughs> so <laughs> like not even like think of your biggest sci-fi civilizations and even they, they couldn't build it. Like the Federation from Star Trek or like the Galact- the Empire from Star Wars couldn't even build this thing. Like you would have well, to you take- just start with like a partial one, right? Like even if you get 1% of it, it's still gonna be a lot. And then even you just build like- on later. Would it be an orbit around the sun and absorb the energy? Or like how would you, sh- but how well, would you, right? You can literally- Orbit? You could, and, I mean, in the game, I play this game called Stellaris and you have, you build it in stages and like the first section you build is kind of like a, it looks like a uh, hexagonal like framing that's around it. And that alone gives you a ton of energy, right? Mm. And as you build, as you upgrade it, you build it to where it completely encapsulates the whole star. And that just gives you a re- retarded, excuse me, <laughs> I, should, I shouldn't use that word. It gives you a ridiculous amount of energy, right? Um, but like, yeah, like Greg said, even like a even like a little bit would give you a ton. I mean, you get a ton of energy from solar right now on Earth through an atmosphere and a crazy distance away, right? So if you had something closer, oh my gosh, with with a vacuum, you know, so there's no way to go through the atmosphere, right? You no, know, it's just right on top of it. I mean, I'm just, this is science fiction, but, but. <laughs> but think about how many solar panels you would need. That'd be tons. And what do you do? You like, need how to do you harvest entire planets to build right? it? Just to build yeah. it. Right. Yeah, just to build it, you'd have to like destroy. Okay. Hypothetically, uh, excuse me. If you wanted to build like a, a Dyson sphere right now around the sun, You'd have to like destroy Mars and Venus and a ton of other planets just to get them the whole planets just to get the materials enough to build it. It's you probably know? more than that, even. That sun's huge. Like the build and plus you're building out, I assume, like thousands of miles away from the sun. So that alone that's gonna increase the circumference. Heck yeah. Um That'd according be according that'd to that would be a project. According to <laughs> a project. 
According to Anders Sandberg, an expert on exploratory engineering, a Dyson sphere on our solar system with a radius of one AU would have a surface area of at least, <laughs> I failed at math. How many two, zeros is it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> two, to, to what power? Is it more than 20 <laughs> zeros. 2.72 2 times 10 to the 17th power kilometers squared. Wow. 600 like, million times, well, 600 one million. one AU, that's the, uh, that's where the Earth orbits. 600. So I imagine you would want to make it a lot smaller than that. 600 million times the surface area of the Earth. <laughs> Jeez. So we're talking about an engineering level. That's I would just say just build it at like the orbits of Mercury. You know? Really close. Even then, yeah. even then it'd be crazy. I really like yeah. the, oh, so, okay, so speaking of, not to interrupt, but speak, hold your thoughts, Shane, but speaking yeah. of like, um, actually, you know what, you go ahead, because my thing is kind of, you know, it's, <laughs> so you go first. I, I was about to say, like, you would have to have other alien, you know, civilizations contributing on this, and then somehow shipping all this material here to... Be like a utopia project. Right, yeah, you have to have like, at least like, a million thousand or you know, something thousand other alien civilizations all converged on one sun to create this thing which kind of made like a game like stellaris and, and fiction in general like star trek or star wars kind of mute where not mute moot where it's like why why are we going to fight when we can just harness infinite energy right here and like there's no reason to fight because we got everything we need like i mean how could you need more like it Logically, it doesn't make any sense for me to go kill all these other fucking aliens when, like, I have everything I, I need right yeah, now. Yeah, it's probably more work to get in a war with another civilization than to just, like, destroy a planet and get the resources. Exactly. So, like, logically... Unless that's... there's, like, some biological force that you need to harvest. If they're a threat, you know, I guess. I guess, it, again... It comes down to like ideology, right? Like the Galactic Empire wants to rule the emp the galaxy, so like their ideology is to rule the galaxy. So it, it's your ideals, which are more abstract than the physical reality. Like if, if everybody was just based on resources only, then it wouldn't really. That's right. like, there's a, there's a lot of theories about why war happens, right? And one of them is resources. So like I go to I go to conquer your nation to take your resources, but that's not always the case. You know, like um Germany didn't want just resources. They wanted land, but they also wanted to spread their ideology. So well, over here you're you're so advanced where you just get bored. <laughs> and you're like, hey, let's go out and then take over this planet, because because why not? We already mastered everything on Earth or our current planet, so why not cause create a fight, go out there, create a conflict conflict that would even you know, enrich your home planet because you're all supporting that conflict conflict. But I think we're gonna reach like we're going to reach um, technologies that kind of transcend our own ideas of what it is to be human long before we ever have the technological capabilities to build something like a Dyson sphere, you know, to where like right. we will transcend our own bodies and become virtual or become artificial or like, what does it even mean to be human at that point? And like, I mean, if we all had like, Oh, Neil's coming in. Like if we all had the, if we all lived in a vert, if we all suddenly like, uploaded our consciousness to a VR and we had everything we needed then, then why do we need to con why do we need to continue outwards when we have everything inwards, you know? And right. And then even your, your, your resource consumption would go down dramatically because you're just plugged into a feed the whole time. You know, you're, you're vegetable on a, on, a, on a gurney. Hey, we welcome our buddy, Neil, who hasn't come back on since the very first uh, return of the podcast. How's it going, buddy? Not so bad, gentlemen. How about yourself? Doing good. Good. Good to hear. Uh, let me let me just send. I like your Aurora. Yeah, me too. Oh, why? Thank you. I've uh, <laughs> I have to download some of my. I have a lot more. Um, this is just standard with Zoom, but I have a few more 
adaptive backgrounds that I have on my work PC. I got to get onto here to make it a little bit more uh, zesty, for lack of a better word. Uh, so what I hear, I hear talk of uh, vegetables in chairs here. <laughs> what are we talking about? Okay, so you missed, we already covered the election and stuff, and we had oh, a few, few okay. different things about that. So, and now we're, then that led into like the Paris Climate Agreement, and now we're mm. talking about like uh, Dyson, Dyson Spheres here. and stuff like oh, that. Oh, God, okay. So, <laughs> we're talking stage, uh, stage two civilizations. <laughs> right. Very and, nice. And I kind of made the point like, well, if we already transcended kind of what it means to be human at least what we know what it means to be human at this time like mm -hmm. why what would it matter to like suddenly build dyson spheres and try to conquer other planets when we have like our own little utopia in our cyberspace type of thing? how do you, how do you mean we figured out what it means to be human you mean as in like right now uh, well not right now but soon we should have the technology to build our own virtual uh virtual tech uh not virtual technology but um uh, like yeah virtual reality like as in there's no need to go outside ever again you know you'll just have haptic feedback gloves and you will uh never need to leave the confines of your home to go to say aruba or something like that is that what you're meaning yeah so you you literally like you transcend your flesh to become a digital being, you know? Yeah. Have you seen, um, oh, what the hell is that? Um, what the hell is that movie called? It's a movie in a TV series. The main character's name is Takeshi Kovach. And they have little, maybe half dollar size what, plugs uh, that go in. That's, uh, what? that's, um, that's, what the hell uh, is that called? God, that was really good. Um, yeah. It's on Netflix. Hang on a minute. It'll come yeah. to me. Um, that's really I'll, good. Just, I'll just Google it. But that's basically the same thing where as long as you're, they call them stacks. Altered carbon. Altered carbon. Alter carbon. Yeah. As long as your stack is not destroyed, you can, you know, go into anybody or you can technically live digitally uh, in the stack if you so choose. Um, I don't think that that is that far off. You know, don't get me on the track of Neuralink through Mr. Musk, the Lord and Savior himself. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I don't think that, that we're that far off if you see the how much progression we've made in technology in just the last 20 years since the turn of the decade, or since the turn of the century, I should say. Um, it's pretty ridiculous. I was talking with one of my borrowers here earlier this morning, and I said, you know, everyone I was talking to her about the documents not being in her email address. And she's like, Oh my God, why is everything so slow? And I go, well, you know, you have to, you have to think about this. And the fact that you know, it wasn't that long ago that uh, we had to wait. If you wanted to make a phone call, you couldn't be on the internet. You know, <laughs> Like people forget that that is very, that's not that long ago. And, you know, I think we forget that now in, today's society louis ck had a good joke about that and he's like uh basically whatever we're doing right now he made it a little bit exaggerated but he's like when you're talking on the phone or when you're going to look something up online that's going to fucking space give it a minute <laughs> that information like I, right now i'm talking to you i'm playing ps4 this shit is this is vast di distances and this is happening instantaneously people get Not that fast enough well, no, exactly. It has to be. It has to be instant. You know, it has to be already happened. Which is, I get it. You know, we're we're used to the speed now, but we're not that far away from, you know, cavemen. <laughs> you know, it, when it comes down to it. We already have VR. Yeah, and pretty convincing How long VR too. Be before we can plug ourselves into the matrix. What well, like? The, that, that neural link stuff is going to be the, six. the next thing. Yeah. When we can instantly communicate just with our minds and I can go, yeah, what's up, Greg? And then I can just communicate my thoughts to you and won't even have I've to. I've already sent my response before you even sent your. Ex your dude, ex exactly. It's, it's going to be ridiculous. Well, um, even like human performance too. Like yeah. they already have this one thing out. I forget what it's called though. But they do it for, you know, 
elderly people with, you know, dementia or Alzheimer's where they start, you know, they're, 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 they're walking or they're, they can't pick their leg up as much anymore. And they, they drag their leg and they shuffle a little mm -hmm. more. They do surgery in their brain and they put a chip in there that will fire signals. So if you're dragging it, your foot. To like, act like you're walking. Correctly. Exactly. Yeah, I'll, I'll fire those signals and you'll pick up your leg, you know, naturally because those, that chip in your head is firing little, little signals to other part of your brain telling you, hey, pick that leg up and walk normal. Mm -hmm. What a time to be alive. Right? It's, it's insane. Most definitely. It's, it's way until we're 80. Like, that's going to be so much more advanced. I'm just impressed with that I can DoorDash B-dubs and get it now. Like, that's pretty <laughs> amazing in and of itself, you know? Most it's definitely. Not, five years ago, I'd have to go to the restaurant and get it. I mean, that's pretty cool. Not even five years ago, like two years ago, Last really. Year, dude. Yeah. yeah. Year. Yo, but, people bash Amazon, but like they they revolutionized the whole shipping industry. Like the, the, the one day shipping. Yeah, that's is, the standard now. That's not the exception. That's the standard. I ordered a mouse from Staples and I'm thinking, okay, it'll get to me in a week. It literally came the next day. And that's, that's the new standard. It has to be that one day shipping. To keep up with all the competitors. Yeah, why would I buy from you when I can get it from Amazon tomorrow? Right. It just, it pay, just doesn't make sense. I'll pay five five bucks more to get off Amazon to get it tomorrow than pay five bucks or less from Staples to get a week from now, you know? Yeah, or whenever it comes in the mail. Yeah. Right. If it's right. not guaranteed. So um, about Neuralink, like what are some of the this is how this is what I do, man. I like to take things to the dark side just that's just how i am but like yeah what's the if you think about like the implications of something about Neuralink, like okay well what's to stop like i mean all the controversy recently about russian you know investigate russian disinformation disinformation in the election and just spying espionage in general like what's to stop like criminal activity or government activity that that is criminal to to hack your mind literally i mean yeah. you're gonna have two-factor authentication that'll stop them <laughs> <laughs> so don't even worry about it so i think the worst will be is the the, the, the feed that let's say i'm looking I'm, I'm walking on the street and i'm looking at you know mcdonald's meyer i'm in meyer i'm looking at you know a ps4 ps5 and then that feed going to these corporate corporations and then them sending me ads of that PS5 or whatever I'm looking at, that's going to happen mm -hmm. more. Kind of like you see on Facebook or the internet. If I Google, um, you know, a new a new mouse on Amazon. What about I'm YouTube ads about new new computer mouses? What about your like deepest darkest parts of your psyche, like your your fetishes and your like all the thoughts you don't want anyone else to know? Exactly, or your your sexual appetites that are less than conventional that no one needs to know about like d d really yeah. dark stuff you know or even hey. just your voting preference like who you voted for then or, or i don't know if you guys have seen like the movie the invention of lying or something i think is what it's called that's a good movie but like it, it's a universe where like lying does not exist and people are just up for it and blunt and we're like, yeah, you look fat in that dress or whatever. And that's just how people, how people talk. Right. Those thoughts like that alone would be embarrassing where you, somebody's yeah. like, well, Hey dude, what do you think of this idea? And in your head, you're like, that's a crock. That sounds like shit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you can't but, usually, you usually can't say that, but you can sometimes, but not always. So, so there, needs to, there needs to be some kind of barrier in place somewhere. Hopefully. Yeah, would there would there be a filter <laughs> in that neural link to like so you can tell what to send, not send everything? Lord, I hope so. I would hope so. <laughs> yeah. I would hope that would be like the first update. <laughs> like V1, it's like, okay, patch notes, we install the filter because people are just saying everything. <laughs> or yeah, like is that so the wax out here? Wax out here? I don't think so. Fuck, I don't know where it's at. Uh did you check the uh drug drawer? Oh yeah. <laughs> Where's Casually, this, uh, where's this drawer, man? Are you going to share it? Uh, it's right in the kitchen, man, where everybody <laughs> keeps their loose pens and drug paraphernalia. You know, who doesn't, 
Who doesn't keep the shit in the drug drawer, huh? You playing with Dave? No, I'm not playing with Dave. No, oh, I'm on a uh, on a podcast and playing this at the same time, trying to mm. use my brain to the fucking uh, most that I possibly can. <laughs> uh, but you're trying it? What? The, do them both? Yeah. Is it going do it pretty good? It's not bad. It's not <laughs> great. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be able to. We were talking the other day about um, how I wanted to uh, on my lunch breaks, I usually listen to a podcast or something on YouTube, just something a little bit uh, more uh, educational. And I was talking to him about, uh, I wish that I could actively talk with borrowers and multitask at the same time, like watch videos or, you know, uh, do whatever, have another conversation while I am actually walking to someone through the documents, which that would be fucking incredibly difficult to do. Um, you know, reliably and be able to actually sell and talk at the same time. So, um, you know, trying a little bit here and there to uh, multitask and get my brain a little bit better as far as, um, you know, multitasking is concerned. This isn't all that consequential. I'm just playing fucking full in order that I've already beat before and talking to you guys. So it's not like, uh, you know, it's the end of the world here, but uh, a little something to keep the plasticity alive. So as somebody who's had several concussions, like, and I know, yeah. I know a little bit about brain health, um, stuff that you are, have already seen or read or heard is mm -hmm. not as uh, cognitively intense. So like, mm -hmm. if you've already seen the same friend season about 10 times, that's relatively safe for you to watch on a concussion or on a brain injury. Mm -hmm. What you don't want to do is watch like the, the latest Attenborough documentary that you haven't seen because that's a lot more cognitively intense. Video you games, actually have to pay attention. Video games are the absolute worst. Like you don't want to do those <laughs> when, when you have a brain because they involve, they involve hyper, hyper stimulation, hyper awareness. And, mm -hmm. But if you've already played it, then it'd be the same thing as watching like Goodfellas or something. You've yeah, heard. just having something on in the background. Like with this, yeah, I'm not really in like a boss fight or anything like that. I'm just, you know, fucking around and going and trying to find all the stuff I haven't found yet. But um, it's just something nice to uh, have on in the background. But anyway, back to our horrible privacy, you know, privacy altering uh, Neuralink. I think that yes, there should, there's going to be something that it's a, you know, it's going to be a disconnect that says, Hey, uh, don't send that, you know, when you're talking, like trying to formulate a text or whatever the case may be, it's going to be like, yeah, don't, you know, uh, you know, don't tell the chick that you want to talk to that you're staring at her tits. Like you, you, you want to say, Hey, how you doing? Not wow. Your tits look great. They're <laughs> going to have, they're going to have something that way you're looking at, you're like, okay, cool. Looking at those. And then, you know, whatever it is, there has to be some kind of break for lack of a better word to go, uh, you know, let's not send all the information that comes over your head, you know, over your uh, mind. It can only be a portion of it. Now, but, but they, could they, could they still access the, that portion that the filter blocks? Who the fuck knows? Um, I know. Yeah. I, Musk has been pretty darn, you know, tight lipped on all this shit. Cause number one, yeah, it's just his style. But number two, if someone was out there trying to copy it, you don't want to give them, excuse me, you don't want to give them all your secrets right at once. Say, yeah, this is what it does. And here's how we, you know, right. prevent uh, whatever the fuck it is from uh, messing with your brain. So, but um, yeah, I don't know. Um, as far as like cyberpunk fiction is, Altered Carbon would be preferable to almost every other kind. So yeah, the ability to escape death um, definitely has its advantages. You know, it can be a little bit tiring um, after a while. But, I mean, I guess if you always found some new things to do or if you, you know, maybe chose a different career path every 20 years or something like that, it might not be too bad. But I think at a certain point, uh, you know, not saying that I want to die tomorrow, but at a certain point, most folks just want to check out, you know, <laughs> if I'm being brutally honest, a lot of folks, once you get into your nineties, you know, there's 70, like right now I'm 28, uh, 
to live to, you know, say 120, I got to do a hundred more years of this shit. That sounds like a lot of work. Like I want to live a to lot be... of elections. Exactly. Exactly. It's a lot of bullshit. I think that I would like to live to 108 and just a little bit after. So it'd be like 108 and a half. I want to see 2100. That's it. As soon as 2100 hits January 1st, 2100, I can die, get hit by a fucking truck or whatever kind of space vehicles are driving around in 2100. But I think that a lot of folks um, just say, yep, we're good. You know, I, I'm fucking done with this. I've lived a great life, but I am, I'm more than good. You know what I mean? In my opinion. I had a recent discussion about this with a coworker and I was a lot more a lot more uh, ambitious than you, I guess. I was like, man, maybe about 500 I could probably do. But then I never, oh, uh, I didn't really yeah. think about how long 500 years is. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, how many things are there to do that I haven't done in 500 years? So if you think about it, if you really need to master something, like if you're going for the long haul, um, you know, mastery of a real a skill, how long does that take? 10 years, you know, to, to not to get to like grand master level, but to really know something in and out and be able to teach it completely 10 years, maybe. If you want to be a grand master, like 10,000 hours. Yeah. So what does that equal into, you know, 10 hour shifts, a thousand days. And that's not that long, you know, that's, that's like under what? Five, that's under four years. Under four years. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, man. I don't know if I could do 500 years then. So not... you're, you're going to have a thousand or a hundred skills. Yeah, but you can just veg out on the beach for a like hundred or so. I don't know. I like eating, you know, and I like, I like pleasures of the flesh a lot. So I might spend a hundred years just doing that, but that gets pretty boring pretty quickly. I'm sure. But how fucking bored were you this quarantine? Oh, well, you know, bored like is if, the opposite, man. Like I, if... <laughs> I had him. A mental breakdown during the quarantine so but i'm saying if you are trying well, to look at uh, yeah but if you're trying to learn a skill or if you're trying to watch tv or something like that this six months or you know seven months whatever how fucking long it's been i've watched pretty much all the things that were on my list to watch <laughs> now could i i'm just talking about movies and shit but could i find other things yeah but at the same time this six months i'm cashed out you know, and 500 years or even 100 and change years, that seems like a fucking long time to have to be with your own thoughts. You know what I mean? I think I'm in it for the long haul. You gotta hope that you're, you know, financially stable too for the full 500 mm -hmm. years. If you go, I think I could make it like at least a thousand. A thousand? That's, <laughs> that's, that's the like a lot of the implication. I think I could. Um, like Aubrey de Grey was on, uh, Rogan's podcast and he's a guy who's like, let's try to make people close to immortal as we can, you know, mm -hmm. anti-aging. Um, and one of the implications is like, um, like, well, at a certain point, like <laughs> how many things like really, like in terms of like your standard of living and stuff like insurance and a lot of those things suddenly become in affected because like, Oh, yeah. well, suddenly people's lifespans are in the centuries. So like, I know what podcast you're talking about. Yeah. That's a, it was really in eye opening, but like to think about like social security and insurance is like, well, what yeah, is, you have to make that living. <laughs> right. So like, what does it mean to retire? What, when I'm 200, 300, 400, like, what does that mean? You know, right. I would just buy a spaceship. Just live on that. Be like an RV, but intergalactic. <laughs> Fly away. You know what though? Like, there's a lot of philosophical and like I'm not re I'm not a religious person, but there's a lot of religious uh, implications too. Where it's like, I mean, if you think about it from like a Buddhist perspective, like the number one principle is that life is difficult, life is suffering. You know, and there's a lot of trauma. And I mean, I mean, you guys are roughly we're all roughly the same age. We're in our late twenties. You know. And I'm sure you've experienced quite a bit of trauma already. And it's like, well, should we tack on another 400 years of that? Because that might be the case. 
Like how many friends and lovers are you going to have in that time period that might die or who knows, you know, how many hardships are you going to suffer? And like, I I wonder though, like, let's say a hundred years from now, when you're 128, you're not going to remember this conversation. Like, not vividly, yeah. No, yeah, your, your, your hardships, or has to be a pretty, you know, distinct moment in time a hundred years ago that you remember. Every, the, the mundane is going to fade away when you're a hundred and, you know, 50 years old. Yeah. Yeah, you're not wrong about that. The big things in your life will stick out, but right. you know, just like your childhood, you, know, you remember your good birthdays and big family trips, but you don't remember what the fuck your mom cooked for dinner in 1998. Right, right. You know, unless it was magnificent, you went, you know, somewhere <laughs> fancy, but you don't know. Yeah, you don't know what the fuck that is. But the one thing that I always like to keep in perspective was, uh, so a little bit of background. My, uh, my mother's parents came over from Hungary back in the 20s. They... Uh, Grew up on the same uh, street in Delray, Detroit, and uh, they were, you know, high school sweethearts, all that bullshit, blah, blah, blah. They got married uh, during the war, grew up, raised a family together. They both passed in 2010, all right, within three days of each other. Wow. Grandfather died on a, was a Tuesday, all right? Grandmother died that thursday oh my gosh she passed away from a broken heart there was nothing physically wrong with her but she just said yeah we're good you know i've i've led a great life i've been with my husband for almost 60 years we're good and she cashed out now my uh stepfather his um his parents one of them died in the late 90s. It was his mother. And then his father, George, lived up until I think three, four years ago, something like that. He said to my mother when my grandparents passed that uh, they were very lucky because he wished that he would have died when his wife died. Mm. Because he said in his heart, he died when she, she was, she had a, shitty battle with cancer so he's like you know i really you know i know it sucks you both you lost both your parents but trust me your mother is a very lucky woman that she got to pass and you know be with your your grandfather you know in heaven but uh that's another thought that i have as well is that say you do have that 500 you know thousand year lifespan and just by freak accident, you know, you've had your wife who you've been living with for the past 200 fucking years and she gets hit by a bus or, you know, your, your spaceship blows up. That's, that is a, a loss that I cannot comprehend. And I don't know that you as a human being could get over that it, you know, mentally, you know, spending your entire life with your soulmate for, you know, not to be corny, but for lack of a better word, your soulmate for the last 400 fucking years uh, would be kind of rough to, you know, watch them go. How many uh, soulmates are you going to meet in your cousin your life? Re-upload, re-upload exactly. the last save file. <laughs> From the last save file, <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you have, if you have enough money. Body. You're like, honey. Hey, I got you upgraded. Uh, yeah, now you're Asian. You lost body three. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Three. I guess. And that's but, the other thing. I mean, that's what that's what makes like something like Black Mirror an amazing show is it really dives into the implications of that. Like where yeah. it's like, okay, like there's a one episode where um the woman loses her husband, right? And then she creates like an android just like him. And it's like, mm-hmm. well, it's really not him, but like Yeah, but is it him though? Is it him? Right. Yeah. And it's like it's it's pretty damn close. <laughs> San Junipero. Up, yeah, my cat. She's a bubble. <laughs> But, uh, I wonder too, if you do live a thousand years, how much would society like change you know, nerf, nerf like no protect car crashes or freak accidents? Oh, like, what's common death? So they probably, they probably innovate away from that, where you're not walking across streets or you're not driving a car. 
and they're going to make all this stuff super safe. So the yeah. odds are you're not going to, you know, not going to die from that. But there's still always a freak accident, you know, and uh, right. common colds or whatever. I guess common cold wouldn't be so common in a thousand years or so. But you got to think that there is always going to be an accident. You know, you fall off a, a mountain while you're mountain biking or whatever the fuck happens. Um, you just cannot be certain always that you're going to be safe. Right. But, yeah, I don't know that uh, I would enjoy – um, all that, whatever the fuck you want to call it, all that life. Um, not saying that I, you know, once again, that I want to die anytime soon, but it seems like you'd get bored or you would at least get um, a little bit, you know, distasteful to being alive. And then this as well, talking about society moving or anything like that, how is society going to shift in 1,000 years from what it is now? Yeah, right. if you think that, you know, there's a there's a generational gap between values in America now. How do you think that someone born in 1992 is going to react to folks that are born in you know 2260? I'm pretty sure they're going to have a little bit different values, and then you're going to be that old man sitting at the pool that's like, oh yeah, yeah. the old guy still believes that uh, you know whatever you know that uh, interspecies relationships can't be a thing. It's like, wake <laughs> up, grandpa. It's 2100. You can marry a dog with a cybernetic implant if you want. That dog's <laughs> got, you know, whatever the, you know, whatever it is. My sister-in-law uh, is Vulcan. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. You don't like Martians, you fucking bigot. Like, you You're know. Racist. I think society <laughs> exactly. will be divided up into countries based on age. It's not a bad idea. Yeah. Age. Be certain yeah, like for South driving. America, <laughs> like, it's like, like if you know, you're born in this zero to 100. You know, they all just live in their own society for a hundred years. But then right. you can't you can't visit anybody anywhere else. Oh no, you can visit people. I'll but be then back still, that's the, that's the point, though. If you're going to just be... have different laws in each region. Yeah, but, but, but at what point, like, if it was my my great 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 grandkids, how much am I going to care for that? You know, my lineage that far back. <laughs> Technically, they, may not, but mine. they live in a different country. <laughs> Right? Because even yeah. now, I have aunts that I've seen probably twice my whole lifetime. And that's literally yeah. my, my mom's sister. Right? Right. Yeah. So and if, it's... If, if the tree keeps branching, you're not going to care at that point. You're going to have your inner circle of relatives and family you're going to hang out with. And yeah. you really won't expand out from that. Yeah. I, I had to have to agree with that. I don't think that you would really give that much of a shit not to be you know, uh, not to be blunt, right. but you know, if it's six, seven, eight generations down the line, do you really care? And then if you've done like any of the genealogy stuff, like 23andMe or whatever like that, you know, they tell you all the time, I have fifth and sixth cousins that live all around. Do I give a fuck? No. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't know who any of them are. They don't even, it, their last names aren't even close. The last time that we shared a familial name was like right. four or five generations ago. And it's like, yeah, okay, great. Your your parents came from the same region of Hungary that, that my grandparents did. But, you know, it's kind of redundant at the same time that, you know, I, but yeah, I, who right. the hell knows? I don't think that's a problem that any of us are ever going to face. The whole, the whole cul culture, you know, dynamic, if you live, you know, say a thousand years, would tr change vastly. Like, oh, yeah. Every how you inter interact and all of that would be totally different. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You have them like different countries. They have different forms of government. They have different laws they can follow. You know, this generation might be socialist and then this one's like authoritarian. authoritarian. Right. Could, could like you make dictator. that? Yeah, like Saddam right. over here and then you got like Lenin in this country. But then, why wouldn't the old, uh, the young generation just fuck up the uh, old generation because and, and, they and can? They and you think about it now, like back you know, when Lincoln was alive. It already happens. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're all racist, right? They, they all had slaves, they're all racist. If we secluded them and they were yeah. still alive, we would totally go to war with them and try yeah. to change them because they're racist, bad people. Yeah. They, they'd be evil to us. Well, yeah, I don't even yeah, think that uh, one group may still have slaves, you know. Right. Yeah. 
And who knows? Maybe, maybe you no, know, five hundred years from now, dogs and cats gain, you know, ability to talk and communicate with us. So now they're equal parts. Well, they have equal people. rights. Mm -hmm. And then us, you know, in our own country, have these deck or you know, dog and cat slaves. Yeah, so and you're like, it'll be a weird dynamic. That's free inhumane. Free right? Yeah, it's inhumane on a, on a cat or a dog. Like, well, Don't it's because they animals. aren't human. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did I miss? Talking about dogs and cats becoming sentient. Oh, boy. <laughs> God, my cat would be a jerk. <laughs> so what saying is, if we had, let's say, every 100 years would be a different country, right? So we're saying 100 years ago, if they were still alive, we would 100% go to war with them because they're the evil racists, and then vice versa. Our generation 100 years from now will look back at us, and we'd be the evil ones, you know, enslaving these cats and dogs. Enslaving cows and, like, yeah. all this crazy yeah. Yeah. Eat the meat. We're, we're eating savage meat. for eating meat. Oh. And they would eventually go to war with us and try to change us. Oh, so that kind of reminds me. The, Neil, one of our mm. fav my favorite podcasts that we did, it was uh, Shane, Greg, and I. And the animals were not sentient. But it's, <laughs> it's like, what if the animals just suddenly decided to kill all the humans and how screwed we'd be? Oh, if they instantly turned hostile? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know that we'd be instantly screwed. I mean, certainly people with large animals or those, you know, crazy fucks that have like 18 dogs at their house, <laughs> that would suck. You would be, you are, you'd be boned. There wouldn't be a puppy fucking chow chance. now. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, if I had like a, a cat or a small dog in my house, I, I could fuck that thing up. I, if it had the jump on you though, <laughs> Because you, like, you don't know when it's going to turn evil, like Cujo. Right. Hmm. We talked about, like, I just thought, like, what if you walked outside, how many birds and squirrels are going to kill you? Oh, would just instantly mob you? Yeah. yeah. They swarms. There's, um, let me see if I can find the um, exact template on the internet of this question of, uh, it's combating, like, you know, those old tropes uh, or old memes that are choose two to protect you and the rest will try and hunt you. Yeah. Um, it's there's that, but it's with animals. Um, mm. choose two. All right, I, I hate to cut this short, but I need to do a few things before I go to bed. So I got to peace out. I hate you. All right. Good. Sir. Bye, <laughs> it's, it's, all right. Sorry. 10 o'clock. All right, buddy. See you all right, next guys. Time. I'll, I'll be on next week. Shoot me a text. Absolutely. Yes. See ya. All right. So I have this here for you. Good old chat link. So with this, the picture is, if I can minimize this fucking chat. So what we have is two of these are going to defend you, and then the rest will try and kill you. 50 hawks, 10 gators, three bears, seven bulls, a human with what looks to be either a shotgun or a rifle, 15 wolves, 10,000 rats, five, uh, five gorillas, and four lions. What are you picking? Hmm. I'll let you know what my choices are. It's going to be the 50 eagles and 10,000 rats. Can you send that in the Facebook chat, in the messenger chat? In the messenger chat, yeah. I already forgot like half of them. <laughs> so like, all right. Oh, no, I put it in the uh, Zoom chat here. Okay, yeah, do that. Yeah, I did. I not put it or did I, I hit I'm gonna go with the uh, cat. Oh, yeah, okay. the bears. Go. I found it. And the uh, gorillas. Bears and gorillas. Okay. Wow. Definitely strong choices. How about you, Chase? Hmm. What are we thinking? Oh, there's a human in there. There is a human in there. Is that me or do I? No. So you, it's you. And then two of these. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna go with the human. You're not going human. You're still sticking bears and uh, gorillas. Yep. Okay. What do you think, Chase? You know, uh, I think I gotta do. I gotta do either uh, eagles and bears or eagles and rats, like you said. 
Do you know why I picked the rats? Why? Sheer numbers. Mm. The fact that there's 10,000 of them. So even if you add up all the rest of those combined, what is there, you know, even if it's 100, you're out, you're outmatched 100 to 1 with rats. Rats, it doesn't seem like, you know, rats are all that big of a deal, but on your point with animals becoming hostile, if 100 rats instantly teleported outside your house <laughs> and we're going to kill you and eat you, uh, that would be a tough thing to actually stop. <laughs> 100 rats at a time? You don't think about it. You're like, okay, they're small, but, you know, what's what's the size of a rat? I, I mean, a rat's body, a big rat, it's probably as big as this mason jar. And you have a hundred of those coming at you, all with razor sharp teeth and the instinct to kill. It's not great. I mean, the bears and the gorillas and everything else, they're all strong. Same thing with the wolves. Like, there's 15 of them. They're pack hunters. You might be able to coordinate with them. But the rats are going to mob anything, unless they're all next to you. If they're all, you know, sitting right here. The humans obviously obviously just going to shoot you before the rats can even make a jump. But the rats are going to mob everybody, and the eagles can run crowd control. Because the only thing that can attack the eagles back, at least with some, you know, hope of success, is a human. And if he's got 100 rats on him, you, <laughs> you, got, a, you got some more pressing concerns. But I think that's a gorilla my... could, could fight an eagle. A do, or, no, a gorilla or, could definitely fuck up or a Or a bear could... I mean, bears swipe fish out of the river. One hundred percent for sure. But if the bear is focused on attacking you and dealing with the hundred rats that are currently biting it, if not more, if an eagle just has to go for the eyes or the throat of a bear, if, once you get a blinding shot, or you know, ha you get half your vision gone, you're fucked. Yeah, you're, you're not going to be able to find me. You know. Greg, you know, I think I think Neil's like a thousand percent right here because I don't know. I would just get in a Hummer and just drive <laughs> over all the rats. I really just Keep don't back think. And forth. Or a roller, you know those those uh, pavement rollers. Yeah, the you asphalt players start, start driving around. I don't Possible. think I don't think any of these other things kill in a one on one fight rats or eagles. I really don't see how they could because Ten, like 10,000 of them. Yeah. Like bears and wolves, they're all create, they're all scary apex predators. Every one of them, but like one human with a rifle is dead. Uh, five yeah. gorillas dead, seven bulls dead. Alligators might be able to retreat underwater. That'd be the only thing. But how are they going to get you? Right. Yeah. How, are, how are the rats going to get the crocodiles? So they don't have to, they can just run defense. If uh, the rats may not be able to uh, get the crocodiles if, as far as I kill them. hold out in yeah. a castle surrounded by water. <laughs> See, now you're putting, you're putting other stipulations in there. Yeah. And I, I guess, guess it does, it does depend on where the battle is being held. You need the variables. Because, yeah. yeah. If the battle is being held at sea or like on an island, those alligators uh, may have a little bit better of a time because if you're on an island, and the rats have to, you know, somehow swim to you. Yeah, it might not be so bad. You could face those rats because you'd be able to keep them at bay. But if it's just land battle, if you're just in the middle of a city or, you know, in the middle of a prairie, you're pretty fucked once those rats start swarming you. I'm just you thinking... Know? I'm thinking about just eagles versus everything else. Really, like yeah. you're, you're, there's no way any of them beat an eagle. Fifty eagles. There's no they way they can't. They can't Not attack. Even That's the thing. That. Okay, so I think a one human is going to kill quite a few eagles, but not fifty. It's just not. If you got swarmed what if by you get fifty inside? eagles, I really just don't. Th I mean, okay, so the eagles are going to all the other animals dead. Period. Like. The only thing that stands a chance versus 50 eagles is one human, and that's still a loss. The eagles are going to take out the crocodiles? Well, fuck yeah. Uh, the, uh, so crocodiles. the crocodiles don't need to be taken out. They only need to be incapacitated or blinded. Yeah. Because once you blind that croc, it's pretty fucking useless. Yeah. Unless it actually stumbles on you, there's not really much else it can do. I mean, 
yes, they do have crocodilian senses and shit like that, but they got to get pretty close to be able to smell you or, you know, taste you, wherever the fuck it is um, that they do to actually sense their prey besides sight. They go for the eyes, the eagles. I mean, yeah, if they, if they blind you, uh, you're, how are you going to find me? You're they dead. Don't. Yeah. But that's my thoughts. I mean, wolves, bears, and, and lions, oh my, everybody's yeah. scared of. But, like, those are the things that die first, if you ask me. <laughs> so, now, like, yeah. Now, if it was. I think 10,000 might be OP, though. Yes, a, that's a what I was going to say. <laughs> a little if, bit. <laughs> now, if the rats are not on the table, if it's just the other things that we're looking at here, rats. or if it was, yeah, even less rats, that would definitely change my answer, especially if it was. Um, if rats were eliminated, I think I'd still go with eagles, and then I would probably go, um, oh, fuck, maybe. Mm, I would do gorillas. It's either going to be bulls, bulls, or wolves. Really? Because the eagles can still run yeah, crowd control. More towards crocodiles now. Crocodiles, ten crocodiles would be nice, but because I could just get a scuba tank, you know, and hide in in the circle of crocodiles. And how are they going to get to me? That is true. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the lions aren't going to be able to. Uh, oh, fuck off! The lions aren't going to be able to swim, and nothing else is going to be able to swim. The only thing that could kill the crocodiles would be the eagles. Well, I think grizzly bears and and gorillas can swim, can't they? Gorillas can swim, but you think they're going to be able to take down ten crocs? Not in their natural environment, no. Yeah, if there's only. Um, is a gorilla smart enough to, to fight a croc? Like, you know, humans can, like, try to grab a crocodile, hit it in the eyes, and try to get away, right? Is a, is a gorilla going to be smart enough to do that? Not I don't there's know. there's ten of them. Yeah, there's ten, one, maybe. Ten, ten is crocs lot. is a lot. Because if you got, you know, two gorilla or two crocodiles for every gorilla, even if they can swim, they're going to be fighting that one – they're going to be fighting that one croc. Another one's just going to come up and mob it from the back. And once it gets a death roll, your arm's gone. I don't know, dude. No, okay, mice omitted. Mm -hmm. I pick I pick eagles, gorillas. Eagles, personally. gorillas. Yeah, I think gorillas. Think... Gorillas have a they have a heightened cognitive ability compared to the rest, right? And plus, having having a thumb is helpful. Yeah. You know? So you would arm the gorillas? Are we allowed <laughs> to arm the animals? Well, if you, you could arm it... the gorillas, I guess, yeah. Yeah, if you give a gorilla a club or something, that'd be pretty helpful. Saw it off shotgun. You got shotgun. No, yeah, not no, the, no, 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 no firearms. No, no firearms. Like give it a belt of grenades. Give it some. Well, then you have to figure out that our gorilla is smart enough to wield a grenade, or they're just gonna pull it and blow themselves up. No, 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 no. Well, we Mid might only have four gorillas. No, medieval weapons are older, so blades, you know, blunt objects, that sort of thing. You know, bow and arrow. <laughs> Well, not that either. No, I know. Yeah, that'd be fucking cool though. Those trebuchets. Yeah, yeah. Treat a gorilla like an orc. You know, give them something that they can smash with, and you're good. Yeah. yeah. I really don't think I. I mean, we talk a lot about the crocodiles. I really don't think they're a big part of the equation. Like, honestly, like, I did. If there's no water involved, it's really not much of a. They're pretty fucked. Threat. Yeah. And what? What am I armed with? You're armed with nothing. You nothing. have to be, you are being protected. But there's one human in the middle here who has like a gun. Yeah, he can, he's either going to protect you or, or kill you. Is he, do I get to pick what he's armed with? Exactly. So like, sure. if that's, if that's like, if that, if like that's a like a 12, a, yeah. if that's, if the human's like a 12 year old girl or Jocko Willink, there's a big difference. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you can select your human, whichever one you want, and you can arm them with whatever you so choose. How's oh, that well, that changes. So if the, he's armed with sound? like a flamethrower, then suddenly the rats not looking too good. So I pick Jocko. I pick Jocko Willink with a wide arsenal of weapons. I mean, that's. I, I pick uh, the dude from The Expendables too. With that chain shotgun who never ran out of ammo. That would be good. <laughs> That's uh, who I would pick. I don't know. Yeah. Or how about this? We'll revert it to the human just has a bolt-action rifle. Okay. All right. Then he's useless. Well, 
He's got a he's the only one with only one with a range attack. You, you know, know, that human against ten thousand rats is screwed. So yeah. like really the only thing that makes this fair, it's funny. Similar situation when we talked about like all the animals versus humans. I'm like, I brought up like, okay, are we including insects? Because if we are, we are done for. Like, yeah. Like like that. <laughs> so like swarmed. Like really, the bugs alone would be enough to kill all of us. So like <laughs> Yeah, it's kinda kinda ridiculous to think that, you know, without our tools or without our, you know, uh, inventions, we're pretty useless and we're actually pretty uh vulnerable. Weak. Very yeah, weak. exactly. Very weak. Yeah. But oh shit. Uh, that's definitely say? our advantage, you know. Yeah, community. Technology. <laughs> Technology. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I can Wikipedia whatever I want. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, if you ever need, uh, you know, oh, I don't know how to make this recipe or, you know, I don't know how to uh, do X, Y, and Z. Yeah, just look it up. Uh, you know, every single piece of information that's ever been, you know, thought about or made is right here on this thing that you're uh, that you're looking at which is just ridiculous. If you were to tell someone in, uh, let's just say, you know, 1920, 100 years ago that, uh, hey, in the year, you know, 100 years from now, you can talk on your phone to anyone around, the well, they wouldn't know what a phone is maybe. You can have a device in your pocket that has every single piece of uh, human knowledge ever created. And you can use that device to not only record your surroundings, uh, set timers, do whatever you want. That device will do literally anything and you can call any person on the planet with it. Do you believe that? Yes or no? I guarantee they would say, you're full of shit. <laughs> you know? That's the interesting thing is like, if you look at science fiction from back right. then, it's all about colonizing other planets and stuff. And we've made, we've made like leaps and bounds in a lot of other ter areas of technology, except mm -hmm. that, except that. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, you're when you're limited by real world real world physics, it gets a little bit uh difficult, you know, cuz you can imagine anything. You can imagine going to the stars and doing all kinds of crazy shit like that, but our actual physical capabilities are much less. Uh, where, you know, most folks back then didn't really think that, you know, back then it was more like a tribal mentality. There's no fucking reason that you need to call someone you know, on the other side of the world or, you know, have a Skype conference uh, or, you know, whatever the fuck this is, Zoom. Yeah, back uh, then, black people were still being lynched. I mean, yeah, so Yeah, and you're like, like <laughs> exactly, you go, so, you know, what is it, you know, I want to get, explore new territories because shit back then was still being explored. <laughs> you know, there were still parts of the planet where we didn't know what it was. So that's what everyone's mind was focused on is, hey, Let's see what we can figure out here. Let's see what, uh, you know, what uh, what we can do. And now, shit, we've already figured that out. So we might as well just make our time here easier until we eventually do figure out how to get to other worlds or, you know, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, you know, and again, it comes back to that, like, well, what does it mean to be human at a certain point when, like, our our – our VR technology and AI technology and cybernetics and stuff become so more, those are things, those things are going to hit us much sooner than our ability to, to colonize other planets, you know? So like the very concept of, of being a human is going to be different when we have the ability to go to Alpha Centauri or something like that, you know, like, yeah. are we, are we even going to be beings of flesh and blood at that point? Or are we just going to be robots or are we just going to be like, we're going to be living in, here's how I think it's going to be. We're all going to be living in our virtual digital space. Right. And then we send drones to go explore Alpha Centauri. And we, we send like digital copies of ourselves into those machines to explore, but there isn't going to be, there aren't going to be many flesh and blood humans by then, you know. I'm down. Sounds good to me. That wouldn't be too bad. But no I like injuries. No, no, but 
okay, so that's true. But the flip side is, is there a lot, there's a lots of pleasurable things that comes with being a flesh and blood organism, right? I mean, sex, like eating. Those are you all. Can't ver- replicate, you can't replicate that in VR. I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. Hopefully, we can. There's no like virtual heroin. Virtual heroin. Virtual heroin might actually be better because you know it might not. It won't kill you like it will in real life, and you can just enjoy the highs and right. <laughs> that would be something. If you could program <laughs> your brain, or if there was an insert Neuralink, whatever the hell it is an insert that you could put in and say, okay, I'm going to install the, you know, marijuana chip here and set the timer for 45 minutes. And then you are blitzkrieg high for 45 minutes, which would be pretty fucking cool. And then if you needed to go, so, oh shit, my mom's calling, you better better turn off the uh, marijuana or, you know, like you said, if you want to do heroin, I want to veg out for the next 11 hours. I got not shit planned. I have a layover in, you know, Memphis, whatever the fuck you are. <laughs> Let's just get really fucked up and sleep in this thing on heroin for 18 hours. Great. Thanks. Bye-bye. That sounds yeah, pretty awesome. You could dial in how, how long drugs lasted. That would be fucking Like awesome. exactly two hours. And you're like, oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, you're like, you want to like, uh, I don't know, you're in the off work office or something. It's like, okay, let's have a bunch of Coke right now. And then yeah, I'm, 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 I need I'm, to be more productive. <laughs> I'm conquering the freaking world right now, but you can turn it off. Like you're going to go home and just sit with your dog or something. Let's turn yeah. this off and switch to weed or booze or something. You want to go to your grandma's house and not be all <laughs> fucked up on Coke. Yeah. That's a pretty good idea. Oh yeah. Well, at this point, that. at this point we're living in like fantasy land, you know, but like, yeah. But I don't is know. it fantasy? I don't know. But that's the thing, is like what does it mean to be a, a human being, you know? Like are you are you you because you're tied to this this vat of flesh, you know, or are mm-hmm. you you because of your your because you're you and what is you and how do you define you? And that's where you get into really deep philosophy, right? About I How think therefore I am. You, yeah. That sort of shit. Yeah, I don't have an answer for you. Oh, fuck, <laughs> dude. They've been talking about that for centuries, you know. Long before computers, they've talked about yeah. that, and we're still talking about it. But it's cool that we can talk about – this is what I love about doing this podcast, that so we can talk about Biden and Trump and then climate change and then uh, the Dyson spheres and then talk about all this sort of shit and and talk about, like, if you had 20 alligators, 15 wolves, blah, 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 <laughs> who the fuck is going to win? Are you going to yeah. die or what? You know? That's what I love about doing this. It's fun. Yeah. I'm glad you finally came back, Neil, man. You came back for the re-inaugural episode and didn't show <laughs> up since now. Yeah, I know. It's been uh, a little bit hectic, but I'm glad to be back here. Uh, are we doing so Are we doing Wednesdays or are we doing Tuesdays? I would prefer Wednesdays. Okay, yeah, it doesn't matter to me. I just want to know uh, as far as scheduling is concerned. Um, uh, but, yeah, what's, we're st- still starting at 8, correct? Or are we starting at nine? Eight. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I'd love to have Christian on, but, you know, he lives, you know, you know, ten, speaking of space, he lives on Mars and the time zone's so yeah. different, you know. Well, it's only about two hours different. What's he, what time does he get off work? He lives in Vegas and like, so it's a three hour difference and sometimes. Oh, he is three hours, isn't he? Yeah. So sometimes he's not off work at the right time and then. Yeah. And then you got Brent calling you out at work at like eight I'm like man yeah screw you for making money and doing being, su- <laughs> being successful well, you should, yeah. <laughs> you like, hey guys <laughs> yeah i gotta i gotta go do this podcast you know no big deal i gotta uh, leave <laughs> yeah i'll talk to you later yeah we'll <laughs> figure out your documents it'll be fine <laughs> we like, oh yeah okay out working come on we needed you we needed you for this project no i, I have other priorities goodbye <laughs> Yeah, prior commitment, got to go talk about space. No big deal. See ya. Good luck with that. Look, look, no, I know that's like a satire and it's funny, but like, Mm -hmm. honestly, a a little bit of me is like, you know what? I still agree with that because we're talking about really cool stuff. Like, and we're talking about being a person, you know, and that's more important than, you know, 
not being a person. Not being a person. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, do we have any uh, topics lined up for next week, or is it just pretty much you know whatever the fuck happens in these next you know six and a half days? I like military to... industrial complex. Ooh. Oh, good me. old Miss. Uh, good old Miss Harris and her uh, her future war plans. We want to talk about that. I think Mr. Neil and Mr. Christian, the libertarians, need to be on that podcast. Yeah. I, uh, my, uh, the one thing that I want to see out of this administration is uh, getting out of Iraq. If Biden can do that, you know, if he can say, hey, uh, it's been, uh, holy shit, it's been, a, it's been a long ride here in good old Iraq, but, uh, you know, we've had two generations die so far in this fucking war. Uh, maybe we, we can. Uh, the oil out, though. You know, yeah, you know, we haven't we haven't squeezed all done. the oil out, so I Don't guess we can't done. leave yet. I've gone on record as already stating that if the Biden and Harris administration get us involved in another war, they've lost my support already. Yeah. And I'll, hey, I'll go on record as saying that I did vote for them. I did. Yeah. Well, I won't be shady, but. Yeah. If they do that, I'm. That's it. No. Where could they possibly go to war? They make sh- They they'll find something. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I can but see... we've we've already been to the Middle East. You know, that's old news. Suddenly it'll be like we or found. We're gonna a... go to like Madagascar. Why can't we go to like Madagascar? Suddenly it'll nice. be like it'll be like we found uh, we found silicon, we found oil in Colombia, and then we gotta invade Colombia or who knows. That would be nice because it's it's closer. <laughs> yeah, we haven't had any jungle warfare in a while. We need another jungle war. We should really get that going. Uh, nope. No, thank we're you. We're already working on deforesting <laughs> the Amazon, so yeah, you know we're uh, we're past the age of uh, well, almost I should say, almost past the age of uh, you know active military conscription. So I think we should be fine. Well, <laughs> Where, wherever they want to go, go to another continent. Hey, well, I will say that I, I can't see, I can't hear, I got bad knees, bad neck. They're not yeah. going to take my ass. I mean, uh, like, you say that. You'll be in the uh, in the logistic can, core somewhere over there. The hey, well, there's a good question. There's a, mm-hmm. no, ser- seriously, though, there's a good question. Like, okay, so something happens and it reestates the draft. Mm-hmm. You're sent a draft notice. Mm-hmm. Hey, Brazil nukes North Korea. <laughs> what Brazil. Do you, what do you, What do you do? Uh, cool. Where am I going? I'm with you. I I I'll fight. I don't. You know. I don't personally think that whatever war I'm going to be sent into is going to be uh, something that I necessarily am wholeheartedly agreeing with, unless it's you know some kind of World War Three situation where we have to. Uh, you know, make sure that uh, we're not taken over by whoever the fuck, Russia or something like that. But, you know, um, if it came down to it, you know, what other choice do we really have? Uh, I mean, I guess you could say don't no, say fuck the government and overthrow the whole goddamn thing. But um, at the end of the day, sure, let's fucking go. If I'm going now or I'm going, you know, in uh, 15 years from now, you know, 40 years from now, whatever it is, let's uh, roll the dice, see what we can get. We get that nice uh, VA loan out of the deal, so I guess that's good, mm. you know. <laughs> but uh, no, I think um, the only thing that I can see really popping off in the next uh, four years would be something in Eastern Europe. Um, well, I guess uh, technically, if that's Europe or not, but. I guess it's Europe. It's on the border of Asia, but whatever the fuck it is. The um, current Azerbaijani-Armenian conflict. I think that that Didn't they just um, squash that? Ah, yeah, they did for like a day, and then they said, fuck you. I thought they squashed uh, the beef. They did, and then, yeah, they said, fuck you, you Armenian motherfuckers, and, uh, you know, Azerbaijan fucked them up again, so... Can I just say... Can I just say... The Middle East and Eastern Europe need to just calm down, and we need to. That's a good blood. They can't. It's easy to say that when you live over here. Try living over there, where it sucks ass. Like how many yeah. wars have to be have to be uh, started from those areas? <laughs> I mean, it's just like the Balkans. Everyone in that part of the uh, world is fucking. Uh, oh shit! Hello. 
is uh, a little hot blooded, and it's, yeah, it'll happen. But uh, oh fuck! Let me see World War One. That's the Balkans, and yeah. obviously World War Two is a uh, after oh, World War One. So they need to yeah. contribute to the Dyson sphere. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Like, oh, hey, pay, pay your sphere tax. Where's your sphere tax? <laughs> We're going to come in and, and, and get some resources. From we got to get those Romulans in to pay their sphere tax. You can't even fucking uh, get people to agree, agree on climate change, let alone uh, building a fucking sphere in our space. Dude, don't get Greg and I started on that. that if I had to pick, if <laughs> I had to. All four of the sphere. If I had to pick a number oh, no. one, if I had to pick a number one issue out of everything, it'd be that. Yeah. It's my number one, you know. As far as what you are passionate about and what you'd like to see, yes, uh, changes affected. Yes. What's more? I think, um, what's more existential than that? I mean, the economy. Uh, well, <laughs> at a certain point, you know. Your corporate uh, overlords, Chase. Yeah, at a certain point, you know, the uh, the economy does come into effect like this virus. There's a certain point that, you know, uh, this is just being talked about. To, it was either today or yesterday on Rogan where, um, you know, what's the actual toll? Holy fuck, I forgot how hard this was. Uh, what's the actual toll on, um, you know, people's lives from this lockdown? Yes, I know. Oh, motherfucker. I'm playing... Uh, <laughs> Have you either one of you played Fallen Order yet? No. It's a, a Star Wars game. Holy fuck! fuck. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Yep, we're good. I'm gonna die. So I'm just <laughs> gonna pause that. Anyway, um, the what they were saying was the effect of this virus and the effect of the lockdown is that yes, most definitely it did save lives. Locking down and yeah, you know, quarantining is great, but if we're perpetually locked down here and we are never you know, if this is the new normal is lockdown, when are the numbers going to tip in the opposite direction? That here's a number of people that have been uh, saved from the coronavirus. And, you know, somewhere here is the number of people who have lost their lives from quarantine, whether it's, you know, loss of their business or what have you, or uh, they were saying that cancer screenings right now and just preventative medicine, people aren't going in for that shit. They're not going in for heart screenings. They're not going in for mammograms. They're not going in for pap smears, whatever the fuck it is. All that preventative stuff, they're like, mm, I'm okay. Lines are pretty long. I don't want to get COVID. I'll, it's probably nothing. How, how long does it take for the numbers that we're saving from COVID to be trumped, uh, trumped from uh, the numbers of people that are lost through the quarantine? That's scary. Whether, I think we've probably it's, already passed it. Whether it's, yeah, I'm suicide or you know, just anything like that. There's a lot of people that are fucking sad. I think anything that wrong cannot get months. out and, you know, talk to anyone, which is fucked. But, um, you know, I can't make that call. I don't fucking know. But at a certain point, you got to say, we just got to open the shit back up. I don't know that that time is now. You know, they've got some new kind of vaccine on the horizon, but there will come a certain point where you just have to say, you know, it's that fucking uh, Rocky Five or Rocky Four, whatever it is. If he dies, he dies. Hmm. At, at a certain point, it's just let the fucking, like that weird moment in curling where you let the rock go. Just wherever that fucking thing lands is where it lands. And that's all the rest that, uh, you know, everyone that dies, sorry, sucks to suck, but you got COVID. We need to go on, you know. The three things I have to say about that. Okay, yes. first, I remember reading an article way back when it all really started, like April, about yeah. how a lot of like elderly people who were having like chest pains and heart attacks, strokes, were not going to the doctor because they're terrified of COVID nineteen, and they yeah. have they survive, right? They survive the heart attack or stroke, but they have long lasting. Health, yeah. Health, yeah, exactly. As a result of it, because oh, it wasn't fuck. it wasn't caught soon enough Just and corrected, you know. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, and that's like you said, that was way back in the beginning. You know. My second thing is like, okay, I'm kind of to the position now where like I don't want another lockdown for several reasons. One, 
on a selfish level is because I had a freaking anxiety attack during the lockdown yeah. and would rather not have another one because <laughs> my mental health is important to me. Yeah. That's... Number two about that is like, okay, everybody wear masks and stay six feet apart. Right. It's not that hard to do. It's not that bad of an inconvenience. Can we do that please? <laughs> I mean, like I want, I want stuff to return to normal myself, you know. But like, yeah. if people won't comply, and I'm gonna. The reason that I don't want to lock down at all is because we know that it doesn't work. You I mean, should. We had lock, yeah. a major lockdown for like months, and the cases never went all the way down. So yeah. it, it doesn't even do anything. I mean, yeah, it slows it down, but. I feel like we did, we did all that work and suffering for nothing. Cause yeah, the exactly. Cases, the cases are crazy now, again. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's just people can't follow directions. Like yeah, you said. don't work. So don't try it again. <laughs> no, if you, if you actually do quarantine when you have the virus and you actually do social distance, that's fine. That as, you know, it's proven to work, but. You know, the lockdown is exactly the opposite of what people need. It's you need to get out there and keep your immunity up. You need to keep active. You need to keep your wits about you. And you need, you need to be able to interact with folks. I think we're in a good space now. I mean, I know we're fucked. But I think we're in a good space now with the um, – everyone's a little bit more proactive about going to parties or going, you know, out to see people and say, hey, you know – have you been in contact with anybody? You know, have you? <laughs> have you know? Has anything? You know, I bought uh, for my party. I bought a little. Um, I know this isn't foolproof because we still don't know all the ins and outs. But I brought a uh, contactless th- uh, thermometer to take everyone's temperatures when they came in. I'm like, hey, take off you know your your war paint, whatever the fuck you're we're wearing. Let me take your scan real quick. Cool, you're good. Come on in, and then. I asked people as well, you know, have you had any, you know, do you know anyone that's had the virus? Have you been in contact? I know it's not a for sure thing, but it's been over two weeks now. No one that has went to my party has tested positive. I've gotten my test as well. We've all been good. It's about being smart with your planning. And if you're actually going to, you know, have a big, have a bigger function, fucking 10 people, (laughs) a big function. (laughs) If you're going to have that gathering, just do it correctly. Dude, compared to all the rallies and the protests, hmm. even yeah. if everyone at your party got COVID, it'd be inconsequential. Yeah, no, that is my biggest thing as well. I'm that, not saying you should do it, but no. in reality. Yeah, no, the the greatest thing that I can bitch about, you know, from everyone uh, virtue signaling about this, uh, you know, virus or whatever is that the media is just completely fucked on its coverage of you know how they characterize the protests and everything when it comes to the virus remember uh back when there was some dinguses that went and open carried at the how fuck uh at the state capitol back in march yeah and everyone was you know like oh my god how could they they're spreading the virus like a bunch of heathens. And, you know, now you see fucking people, you know, thousands upon thousands of people in the streets that are out there for a political protest. And somehow that is bad. Yeah. It's all just because they're on the wrong side of the aisle. Yeah. That, that is why off. it's bad. And I'm like, yeah. If you have the somehow, you know, um, the goal to say that you are non-biased as far as uh, from a media standpoint, from a journalistic perspective. And you can tell me that you are going to prepare, you know, report fairly on subjects. How can that be that all this protesting and all the gatherings are kosher for lack of a better word, but if there's a Trump rally or if there's whatever hit you have it, and people are in an auditorium, I guess, in, your, in an auditorium versus not. There might be a little bit of something here and there. But I just don't get why they're so selective on, you know, who's bad and who isn't bad as far as lockdowns are, are you, concerned. Are you suggesting that the media is biased? Never. Yeah. No. 
Uh, Google, I, feel, I am I not suggesting like, that you have a bias I feel towards like that's the left. Where you're headed. No. Google, I want to let you be clear right now, my Google Home and my device that's listening to me all the time. I am not saying you're biased. I'm saying you're very fair. <laughs> no, but seriously, though, that really did piss me off. Like back in May when George Floyd was murdered, I'm going to yeah. say I'm going to say murdered. It was fucked. One thing that pissed me off is people were protesting. I'm like, this is amazing. Everybody's protesting. Great. Mm hmm. Why aren't you wearing your fucking mask? And then like, yes. I'm like, you got to practice what you preach, you know, and that pisses it's not me that off. Hard. It's yeah. not. And it really made me mad. Like uh, Andrew Yang showed up at one of them and he showed yeah. a picture. He's wearing a mask, right? He showed a selfie yeah. of him wearing a mask. But yeah. then like there's this big crowd of people. They're all within like two centimeters of each other and none of them are wearing masks. I'm like, you know yeah. what? You know what? Fuck you. Like you need to practice what you preach. Yeah, yeah, that and, over. yeah, that pissed me off. No, my uh, my thoughts are pretty simple: is that if you're going to, you know, put up this front or this face that this is the paramount, this is what we need to be concerned about is the coronavirus, then that standard has to be held to everyone, and you know that shouldn't be, you know, right wing, left wing, whoever. That should be everyone, everyone, not just, you know, who makes uh, you look good. Um, and then another thing as well is that I think that, you know, at a certain point with, you know, the debates and everything like that, or, or even just all the shit on TV, if you have been tested and, you know, you know that you don't have the virus, you can lose a mask. When we're on TV and there's two people in the interview and they're sitting six feet apart and they both get a mask on. I'm like, okay, I know both of you, you have the money, you got the instant test, the 15 minute, you know, test. Can we lose a fucking mask? We don't need to be constantly reminded that this is this new weird thing. Am I wrong? I think I that they should wear green masks and they should just green screen their mouth moving. Back on, <laughs> that'd be pretty good. <laughs> they if the they can do the deep do fake, that. yeah, if they can do deep oh, fakes, they could definitely, it. Yeah, they could definitely have, you know, they already have the audio. Fuck, all you got to do is match them out. That's easy. That's a pretty good idea. <laughs> Green screen mask. Deepfake has been a... Bless you. Thank you. Nice sneeze. Or nice uh, mute. Did you did you mute yourself? Yeah, I, I tried mute? to because my, my sneezes are like dad sneezes. So. <laughs> <laughs> I that's a good that's a good analogy. I did not hear the sneeze at all, good sir. So you are quick uh, quick on the uh, mute. Is I it the space bad, button still? No, it's not the space button. I got bad freaking allergies, so yeah. But um, anyway, yeah. Um, What's the space? No. We need to. Um, what were we talking about? <laughs> um, wearing masks or something. Oh yeah, masks and uh, stopping the spread of corona. And getting back to a sense of uh, something that isn't a new normal, something that is actually, um, you know, back to what normal really means. Okay. You know, getting back to actually normal, where we can just fucking walk, and I can go over to your house and have a beer without being like, did you, have you been in contact with <laughs> anyone with a virus? Well, like, my two, my two know. things about that is, one, I'm really sad I couldn't go to your party. Mm -hmm. Piss me off. There will be another, good sir good number two is it's really not that hard to just wear um, it's not gonna like i don't really understand why there's a, just a giant argument against fuck fuck God damn. so two things actually two more things one we've talked about we talk about deep fake on this podcast quite a bit mm -hmm. also um another topic uh we talked about uh, Greg and I especially is like why masks were even politicized to begin with like mm -hmm. where you're like uh, if you don't wear a mask you're the dissent dissenting uh, Opinion, Trump yeah. Trump supporter and mm -hmm. if you wear a mask you're some kind of lefty and it's like well can we just make science not political can we just like, take it like a public health issue yeah, yeah. like so how is it controversial yeah like I had an argument with somebody on Facebook recently where I said okay look dude have you watched mash have you watched house 
Like <laughs> when they're when they're operating on you, they're wearing a mask. And trust me, you want them to wear a mask. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> if you don't, they're breathing all of these germs into your open friggin' body. So like, I mean, what is there really to dispute here? That mask, like, because he he You're showed right. me. He you have the right to not wear one, Chase. Come you on. do, but where's your sense uh, of freedom? Okay, you have the right to not endanger yourself, but you have the right to you don't have the right to endanger other people. So that's kind of gets into a gray. This is right correct. There. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's um, where my sense of libertarianism comes into play. Is I think the my staunchest belief is that. You should be able to do whatever you so choose as long as it does not infringe or um, directly endanger the rights of others, which not wearing a mask, you most definitely can fucking do, but you are endangering others in the process. So therefore, fuck yourself. See, that's now, where, like, I used to be, not to interrupt you. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead Neil. Go ahead. No, that was it. I was going to say is, just going to say exactly that, that, um, you know, you should be, um, you know, you should be able to do or not do whatever you choose as long as you're not fucking over somebody else, which that is um, kind of a hard thing to do sometimes. Most of the time, it's very easy, you know, when it comes down to like individuals' rights or, uh, oh shit, um, or, you know, things like that. But when it comes to this virus, as a whole, you have to be you centric or you social. You have to make sure that you are performing the common good rather than your own personal good, which a lot of folks, you know, our current president included, cannot see past their own needs and therefore are never going to go um, to the you social standpoint of, you know, everyone's need is greater than my own. And that's, a topic that I really want to discuss with everybody. Like I, mm -hmm. I don't mind discussing it now as well, but like, but, yeah. I, would, I would really love to have Christian and Brent and Shane and all these various different perspectives on to talk about what does it mean to have like, this is super fucking deep, but what it means to, what it means to have rights. Getting late for me, bro. What do, yeah. and what do rights mean? Like, Okay, you have the right to not affect other people, but you know what? That goes a lot deeper than a lot of people think, you know? Yeah. Like, how Shane, about this? Shane had an argument once about how, like, okay, like I made the case, like, okay, I should be able to have 10 Big Macs a day and if I feel like it, and that's my problem. And then he's like, okay, well, that makes our insurance rates go up and that, that affects my life. And I'm like, huh, that's interesting. I haven't thought about it that way. Mm -hmm. and, and then you start to realize how... So what, if, what if he has a kid and then somebody's yeah. got to take care of that you gotta, kid? I got to pay sc uh, school taxes for your fucking cretin. What if I don't <laughs> want to do that? So you start to realize how interconnected everybody is. You know, At a certain level, yes. When does it stop? Exactly. So like, yeah. and that's why we have a court system and all these other things to make those determinations, right? Yeah. Cause there's how so about this? I think... Getting, it's about uh, 10 to 11 right now, getting a little bit late. Um, <laughs> I think probably once we have all everyone back on you know, next Wednesday, uh, let's put a pin in the topic and then go back and uh, start up on the you know, values of libertarianism and the, uh, how that intertwines with today's society and you know, coronavirus as a whole. How's that sound? That sounds good because my, my only – my very last point is mm -hmm. like – how like I used to be libertarian and I mm -hmm. at heart my utopian ideology is libertarian yeah. but it, but in practice I'm not a libertarian because there's issues that transcend it like ideally I yeah. want every I want everybody to be an autonomous individual and we live in a individualist anarchist society but that's just not how it is you know but again mm -hmm. that's that's really yeah you know, like you said dude like we need to start that conversation at like seven rather than, <laughs> rather than 11. Yeah. <laughs> and like, and like you said, I'd love to have, I want everybody in on that one. Cause that's yeah. super. A little bit deep. It's yeah. Just a little, <laughs> I mean, dice, uh, Dyson spheres, you know, that's all light. We need, that's really deep. 
<laughs> yeah. It's literally light. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> well, all uh, right. All right, fellas. All right, fellas. I think we should, on that note, we should call it a night. That was a brilliant prod- podcast. And uh, I know I can rely on Greg, but Neil, you better be here. I will schedule better next week. <laughs> okay. All right, fellas. So we'll do All right o'clock next Wednesday. Until next time. Yeah. Until next time. <clears throat> Enjoy. This yeah. is the Vulgar Philosophy Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Have a good night. Please like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah. I never Smash say it. the like button. Smash, you know, YouTube algorithm. Like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Get the likes on. Let's go. I'll you see know, you, boys. I, you know, I Leave actually comment. I like, I never say that either. It's a funny thing. I'm like, I, I even post like, here's my podcast. Watch it. If you don't fucking watch it, whatever. Smash do whatever that the, like button. Do it's whatever you want ask to. You. <laughs> Smash that like. All right. I'll see you guys next week. All right. Good night, fellas. Bye.